Hello, good morning, uh, good afternoon, good evening, depending on wherever you may be in the world watching this. Stream of Blood presents Something Wicked, a uh, four-part Warhammer fantasy roleplay adventure uh, in which we will be serving up a, uh, a healthy dose of hacking, slashing, occasional investigation, possible mutation. All the things that have made the Warhammer universe so enormously popular and have spawned so many video games. Uh, no movies yet. I gather there's some kind of licensing issue there. Uh, but uh, uh, books, audio dramas, uh, everything you can possibly imagine. Uh, and today we are going to be delving into that in classic Stream of Blood style uh, with a three of the best uh, gamers out there. Uh, and me, your host, Humphrey Carr. This is a big, exciting moment for me. I am uh, taking on the the reins that Jared has so uh, artfully uh, carried throughout all this thing and cracked occasionally. Do you crack reins? Whips. But you know that thing where they go, ha ha, like, hi -ha! like that. A lot of that sort of business. Um, and uh, uh, I'm very excited to be uh, hosting this game for you and running it for you. Um, and without much further ado, I'm going to introduce the rest of the gang because you don't want to be stuck with me uh, for hours. Uh, so first of all, I would like to introduce a, uh, a Stream of Blood veteran uh, who is a, a wonderful writer, uh, a uh, possessor of the most incredible <laughs> chaotic good energy I've ever experienced. Um, and the man that I was very excited to meet through Stream of Blood uh, during one of our Call of Cthulhu games. Please welcome Mr. Phil Walker. Hey, um, hi! I promise I won't try to kill you this time. That well, listen. The good thing, no, well, you should try to kill me. I'm going to be controlling a lot of things that are trying to kill you. So, oh, so but... this time, by all means, kill me and kill me good. Um, well, that is that is exactly the, the, the thing to do. I'm thrilled to have you. I'm so excited to see what you uh, do with your character and with this uh, scenario. Uh, but uh, I'm going to barrel right on and introduce um, a, 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 a the man. Uh, the myth, the legend that is uh, Stream of Blood's most regular player, um, a wonderful improviser, um, a, um, uh, a dear friend. Uh, please welcome Mr. Ross Bryant. Hello. Hey, Humphrey. Mm, hi, Rossi. Um, God bless you for coming out to do what is, I believe, your 800th uh, Stream of Blood <laughs> session yes. of the week. It's becoming a problem. Um, I, I'm living more in the realms of the imagination than in the real world. But we, <laughs> the these days... World? In yeah, this economy, it's a place to be. Yeah, <laughs> tell me about it. I would also say that uh, it was Ross's birthday yesterday, so many oh, happy returns to Ross. Happy birthday! Uh, congratulations, Thanks, Phil. <laughs> um, Sixteen years old yesterday. That's right. And, and doesn't he look uh, good with it? Um, That's right. Been working on this Ross a long time. Says, uh, they, oh my God! The comments are coming up. I haven't seen this before. Oh. This is a new innovation, guys. <laughs> That's let's, there you go. Um, people are thrilled to see you. Uh, and then our final guest is uh, first time on the stream. Um, uh, and is uh, a one-time colleague of mine, an all-time favorite of mine, uh, and the person that texts me the most often to ask about obscure cultural references on Great British Baking Show. Uh, please welcome to the stream, <laughs> Gillian Jacobs. <laughs> Hi. Hi, How Gil. else will I know about Gordon the Gopher unless I text you, yes. Humphrey? Yeah, yeah. I, I spend a lot of my time trawling through... <laughs> Google images being like, yeah, Gordon the Gopher. Yeah, does he, is he always in a leather jacket? Um, and if you guys don't know who Gordon the Gopher is, you should look him up. He is the truly terrifying puppet that raised me when I was a child <laughs> through the medium of television. Um, so guys, thank you all so much for coming and doing this. I have a real passion for this game and for this, this world, uh, Warhammer. And um, just to give you and the folks at home a, 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 a little primer, if, you, if you're not familiar with the game and not familiar with the world, uh, First of all, Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay is a D100 based game, so we're going to be using these dice a lot. Uh, and essentially the way the system works is that uh, all these guys have got, uh, and all the NPCs that we're going to encounter, have a series of stats and, uh, and figures. And most of the time you are looking to roll underneath uh, that number. And I will be giving the players various advantages and disadvantages as I see fit, as I feel are, are appropriate. Um, uh, to add to their current score, and they'll be looking to roll on that. But as we go along, I will be uh, on hand to explain if anyone is ever confused about uh, about what the heck is going on. So That's going um, to happen. That's for sure. <laughs> um, yeah. And in terms of the world, Warhammer is a, um, uh, a world that was kind of created in the 1970s by a series of glorious dorks in the UK um, and turned it into a series of, like, choose-your-own-adventures and tabletop uh, wargaming things. Behind me here, you can see various... 
these are here's a Space Marine. Um, that is the, the from the 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 spacey version of this game, Warhammer 40k. And um, but this world is a classic Tolkienian derived world of uh, dragons, monsters, orcs, goblins. Um, uh, and uh, at the very heart of it lies the Empire, which is the Empire of Man. This is basically late 16th century Germany. Um, uh, people live in either grinding poverty or huge luxury. They wear huge ruched uh, sort of puffy sleeves. They all like, look like Henry VIII, um, uh, but late on when he got all fat and gross and gouty. Um, not young, <laughs> sexy Henry VIII, who people forget about often. Um, but he was a whole they piece. show about that one. About <laughs> they, uh, yes, they, they, there's that Tudor show. I've not actually watched it, but I believe he is a hot piece in it. Um, yeah. But yeah, this this is a world of some hot pieces, but lots of big wrecks um, like him. And um, <laughs> it is also uh, a world of superstition and fear, a world where um, all of our worst nightmares are made manifest and wander through the, the highways and byways of the empire causing trouble. Uh, and it is only the... Um, uh, endless war that the empire uh, uh, weighs on its um, uh, wages on its its uh, peripheries and borders that keep uh, humanity from being crushed under the wave of darkness. Anyway, sounds but fun. Enough about Why don't we play a game there. <laughs> Phil, Phil, we try not to do politics here, okay? I'm sorry. Um, no, I'm, I'm just I'm worried I will get deported at a certain point if I <laughs> if I ever say anything. I think America's great. If you're listening, uh, <laughs> if you guys are. USCIS are currently uh, um, taking my application to remain here. So I, it's great. It's really good. And if I could vote, I would for whoever you want me to. Um, <laughs> so, so anyway, without any further ado, I'll now give you guys a little introduction to our specific adventure and then we'll roll right into it. So now see here as I seamlessly change into my voiceover man voice. In the two and a half thousand years since Sigma, the man who became an emperor the emperor who became a god, forged the warring tribes of humanity into the vast and sprawling polis that has become known simply as the empire. There is no record of a winter as long and hard as this. For five long months, from the Sea of Claws to the world's edge mountains, the land has been buried beneath a, si a thick, suffocating press of snow. In the great cities of Altdorf, Middenheim and Nuln, the current emperor, Karl Franz, along with his elector counts and the rest of the nobility, huddle close to their fires and drink the last of their reserves of brandy and pray for the spring. Out in the fields and forests of the empire, the small folk, the peasantry, the men and women who grow the empire's food and pay its taxes and fill its armies retreat to their cottages and hovels, and it is only the very brave or very foolish that stray far from the light cast by the fires in their hearts. For as humanity has retreated into its holdfasts, so other creatures have looked to fill the spaces they have vacated, and from deep within the mountains and the highest forest passes have come greenskins and beastmen by the thousands, and in some places, the remotest places, even fouler creatures have been spoken of, though rarely seen. There are those that say the long winter is a portent, a sign that the end times are nigh, though many more scoff at such superstitions. None, though, can suppress a shiver when they think of the approaching Hexensnacht, the witching night, when the twin moons Manslieb and Morslieb both wax full and the barrier between the worlds of the living and the dead are at their thinnest. Hexensnacht when the light of Sigmar's blessing grows dimmest and the darkness that ever swirls around the empire grows more cloying and suffocating. Hexensnacht, when all sensible folk bar their doors and whisper their prayers to Mor, the god of death, to protect them and their immortal souls. Hexensnacht, just three days hence, as we find a strange group Three humans and an elf gingerly picking their way across slushy snow and ice on the main trunk road from Grissenwald and through the main gates of Grenmacht in the shadow of the Grey Mountains. There is little to mark Grenmacht out from maybe 10,000 similar settlements across the empire, save perhaps that it is the last known location of Bruno Faltz, the butcher of Brunstadt, the most wanted man in the empire with a bounty of 500 crowns upon his head, a king's ransom and enough to bring a quartet of bounty hunters out of the frozen countryside to look for him. So. Oh, my. Yeah. This is where we find ourselves. You three, uh, all of you, I believe, budding, newly minted bounty hunters, drawn by the promise of this huge prize, a king's ransom of 500 crowns, 
have fallen in with the company of Franziska Kessler, one of the empire's most legendary bounty hunters, and have pursued the one uh, ex clue of the existence and the whereabouts of Bruno Pfalz, which is a report that he was <coughs> seen on the road between Grissenwald and Grenmacht just a few days ago. So, who are we, guys? Who do we find? As the camera, <laughs> as the camera descends through the clouds across the frozen landscape of this corner of the empire and, and settles on this group, at the front there's a tall woman, I can tell you, um, who uh, is um, armed with, uh, uh, dressed in chainmail and leather with a sword, um, and she has um, the dour appearance of a long-time bounty hunter. This is, of course, Franziska Kessler. Um, and uh, uh, as, as, you, uh, as she lifts her hand up to you to slow down outside the gates of the, the, the town, she looks from one side of it to the other and goes, fucking hell, what an absolute shithole. Um, and here she is. Uh, so, when, as she turns to look at you to, to register her disgust, what does she see? Phil, why don't you tell us what she sees? Tell us about Smilar Baloom. So I'm Smilar Baloom. Um, I'm a peasant uh, and big, big into the Eat the Witch movement. Um, we, we believe that the only way to make things better is by consuming the flesh of witches. Uh, so we, we want to eat witches. Um, that's, that's, I'm a, I'm a one-party candidate. I'm a one-issue one candidate for sure. Um, but the reason I joined this, and thank you guys for joining me on this mission, is a bit of a sad story. I was out I'm a woodsman by trade. Uh, that's all I am. Uh, my father was a woodsman. Grandfather was a woodsman. His mother was a woodsman. Um, not a woodsman in that area. Not a woodsman. Mm -hmm. She was a woodsman, to be, per to be fair. Yeah. Uh, wood person. Um, I'm a woods person. No, but I was, so I was out chopping wood. Having a good time. And one day I came home back to my hovel. And my cousin, my dear cousin, I found him missing. All I've, and, and all I found were my, my cousin who's also a woodsman. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we, I think we all assumed all he was a woodsman, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And some hair, but no sign of my cousin. So I believe he's gone missing. And I so see. my belief is that Bruno... Uh, oh my God. Fouts. Bruno Fouts has kidnapped him. And I will do anything to bring my dear, beloved cousin back. Yeah, I mean, that certainly fits with... Bruno Fouts is known to be a perpetrator of all manner of dreadful crimes. And he's certainly not above a bit of kidnapping, that's for sure. Um, so Marigold... Why don't we, why, uh, Gil, why don't you tell us what we see mm -hmm. when we see you? Well, you're looking at Marigold Branch Stepper, um, who is a wood elf, mm -hmm. a spy. Um, I'm a courtier? Yes, yeah, yeah. So you're, you're used to mixing it with the high society of, uh, of the, of the uh, wood elf courts uh, and can even hold your own amongst humans. But and, you... and also, I'm Brass Three. I don't know that what means... that means. <laughs> that means that's uh that's your status in society so you're as a spy you're you, although you mix it with uh in, in and around the court you're usually doing it kind of um disguised maybe as a uh, menial of some kind mm. at this stage you're you're uh you're you guys are all low level characters you're all level one characters i should say and as a result you are at the lower end of the spectrum in your line of work well um, so that i think ties into why i'm here today yes I right. think I, because I'm a career level one, this is a big bounty. And if I am successful, then I can really make my um, name as a spy. Um, in Which is this. the thing spies want, right? They yes. Want <laughs> they want to be known. Yeah. They want to be widely known. <laughs> uh. But I've just, maybe I've disguised myself for this adventure. Oh, I would think so. Assuredly. Yeah. You're, you're, a, you're a master of disguise, I believe. I also think I like money. And so I've been drawn to this adventure by um, the large bounty. There's a lot of money. And a whole lot of money. you should also probably know that my career path is as an informer. So beware. Yes. Sure. Well, listen, you've mm. always got your ears open. You've always, you're always keeping a, lo a lookout. I think you're a, a fine investigator, a fine snooper, mm -hmm. uh, good at all that kind of stuff. Um, very stealthy, I imagine, yes. as, a, as a wood elf spy. So, um, 
you know, uh, everyone, just be careful. Also, around. I'm very Marathon. tough. So plus five to starting toughness. You are very tough. <laughs> Uh, and this is where the character and real life meet, it feels like. <laughs> it's one of my, Art one be of my imitating life. Pals. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, Lorenz, uh, what do, what do uh, Smilar and Marigold see when they look over at you? <laughs> well, I think at first glance, when you look at uh, Lorenz von Eberhard, you, you're probably... It's, he just seems like such a small, slight little creature. He's own very. This this character was almost entirely made randomly rolling dice. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Lawrence is only twenty years old, and he's only and, he, and he's only five foot two. He's a he's a little. He's a little fellow. But then I think I, I think the, the but, others. Uh, but uh, ma oh yes, uh, made up for in a with a with a very tall uh, Puritan pilgrim looking hat. Um, <laughs> But then if you if you look a little bit closer, you would maybe get caught in like maybe the most intense, unblinking gaze you have ever seen in your life. Um, uh, Lawrence is a uh, is a is on the career path of witch hunter. Uh, oh, he is no. a um, yes, yes. So, that's, that's mm -hmm. so yes, there's a there's a, a game recognized game element between a uh, uh, Smilar <laughs> and Lawrence. You um, kill them, I'll eat them. <laughs> what happens to them after they're destroyed is of no concern to me. Yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, basic. So we have here a a religious fanatic in the in the cult of the of the cult of uh, Sigmar, who is yeah. uh, like fanatically devoted to ridding the world of chaotic Hexen, and uh, to give yeah to, yeah exactly. Uh, <laughs> um, and. Uh, Lawrence is from a from a noble family, uh, the from the barony of of Eberhard, but he's a he's a bastard son. Uh oh. Um, yeah. So he's so he's he's not his his legitimacy is in is in question, and rumors, perhaps spread by his uh, his not his mother but the but the baroness, say that his mother may have been a witch who held his father under a lustful bewitchment, hence Ooh. his birth. So. Cool. His his uh his um his war against witches is in a way an attempt to to prove that he is not hexborn. Of course. Don't worry, it doesn't so bother me. Is. All I care about is eating witches and football, which is where we throw a foot like a ball. We're poor. Excellent. <laughs> Precisely. Well, so this is this is our happy <laughs> throng as we as we arrive at the gates of of Grenmarkt, which is uh, snowed in, very heavy snowed in. This is a this is a medium sized market town. Um, <laughs> And uh, it has a, th a thick, high uh, earth and wooden palisade around the outside. Uh, like almost every settlement in the empire, it has some kind of defensive structure, apart from those that are very close to big, big cities. Um, and the nearest big city to this is, is Grissenwald, which is where you guys traveled down from, uh, because the um, wanted poster, the bounty that was placed on, on uh, Bruno Faltz's head is from the Duchess of Grissenwald. Uh, and... As you make your way through the gates of the town, it's probably about um, 11 a.m. at this stage. Um, you guys broke camp from wherever you, you camped last night and finished the last leg of your journey this morning. And you make your way through the gates and you're immediately struck by, well, it's time for our first roll, everybody. Always very exciting. Everybody give me a perception roll at a plus 20. Um, I'll also say, while everyone's just checking that, that I will occasionally say things like spot hidden because I play too many of these games and I get the rules all mixed up in my head. And don't, guys, don't roast me in the chat. I got a 52. Uh, on what, Gil? So what's your perception plus what? 20? Uh... Don't worry. Uh, so we look at your uh, sheet. 55. Remember? Oh, so you made it by three points. So you succeeded. Okay, great. How did the other, other two do? Um, uh, I think I smashed it with a six. You definitely smashed it with a six. That's very, very good. And and Phil, how did you do? You're supposed to go under, right? Yeah. So you're looking yeah. to go <laughs> find. I'll go under it. I got. I rolled a sixty-eight out of forty. Okay. So Smilar, presumably mouth salivating at the prospect of witches he can eat uh, in this town, <laughs> is too distracted to like really take in his surroundings, um, and. Uh, unlike the others, the of course the wily uh, the wily wood elf spy uh, does very well, as does the um, uh, wildly intense uh, witch hunter. <laughs> and you notice that the town seems very crowded. It seems like there are a lot of uh, refugees here. Almost you see a lot of pe folks that are 
like families and things like that that are building kind of very rudimentary lean-tos up against the inner inner wall of the of the palisade uh, and people that are uh, as you, as you watch um you see a local house frau um uh, chasing uh, three people out of what you take to be some kind of wood store by the side of her her um house um and you get the impression there are way more people here than there should be really um especially as uh, you guys have been aware for the last four or five months heavy snow has kept most of the empire trapped inside its houses who are all these people and where do they come from uh kessler uh, your de facto leader um looks around she's like um well okay that's interesting right so here's what they told me back in grissenwald Faltz was seen coming through here four or five days ago he had an altercation with a road warden uh Road warden tried to stop him on the road. He killed him, mutilated him, something horrible. So I suggest we find out from anybody here what they know, what they've heard, and if they've got any indication of where he's gone now. Um, now, if you don't mind, I'm going to go and see the ostler here about getting some more feed for the, for the donkeys. Because I didn't mention it, guys. But you've all got donkeys. You no. get a donkey. You get a donkey. You get a donkey. Everyone has a packed donkey, uh, which is carrying a bunch of rations and supplies and this, that and the other. And she is off to talk to someone about getting some feed for him. So while I'm doing that, you three, see what you can learn. Um, <laughs> now, anybody on their sheet, look in the right hand side of your skills. These are the ones that I have typed in myself to the right hand side of your sheet. Um, who's got Law Reichland? What? I, I do. <laughs> um, where is on, this? On the, on the, okay, so you see where it says skills, like midway up your page. I see basic skills. Yeah, basic skills. And this, on the right, there's one that says grouped slash advanced skills. Yes. Is there anything out of there that says law, L-O-R-E, and then in brackets, Reichland? I think nope. you've got like law forests or something. I have no lore. Oh, what a dunderhead. Well, anyway, um, everybody else. Sorry, I, know, I made that sheet. That's classic bullying. That's classic yeah, bullying. Yeah, I mean, yeah, uh, just yeah. abuse. Just, <laughs> just you wait, because I've got tweezers. You do have some tweezers. That is true. That is something. Yes, that, well, that we'll just spy. turn you loose on the populace then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. See if they have so, any splinters to pluck. Who's gonna? Yeah, that that house frau that was chasing those people out of that wood store. Um, there's a chance those people slept on a bunch of splinters, so that might be very useful. Um, so, uh, yeah, you're. So those of you with Law Reichland, give me a Law Reichland roll at a plus twenty. This is an average roll. So in the in general, you're always going to be at least a plus twenty unless things get difficult. Um, uh, I, I made it. Okay, great. So 20, 20 under sixty. Great. So that means you know uh, when Francisca Kessler mentions the road wardens, you know that road wardens are basically the sort of what passes for the police force in um, on, on the highways. They're more like the highway patrol, basically, uh, on the highways and byways of the empire. So they are uh, tasked with keeping the, uh, the, the, the roads clear of bandits and uh, goblins and all sorts of other things that like to cause trouble there. So, and you also... Uh, they could be, and all witches, all witches, mm -hmm. yeah, certainly. Um, and um, no the <laughs> delicious, the delicious, delicious witches. Mm. Um, and and that most towns of this size will probably have a a road warden post somewhere that you can go and talk to them about. Um, Phil, how did you do on your role? Did you do you have law right? Clear? Okay, so when you say plus twenty, this is a meta question. Sorry, uh, it's like whatever I roll, then I add twenty onto it, correct? No, sorry. What it is okay. is whatever your bait. That's fine. That this is it, it is a complicated system, and I may not have explained it very clearly. Um, so, if well, your base, what is your what is your base uh, law, Reichland? What does it say on the far uh, my right? My base law, Reichland, is thirty five. Okay, so that's um, uh, whatever your uh, your intelligence is plus something equals forty two, right? right? When it's written on your, is that I see 30, yes, 35? Is that what it says across? Yeah. There? Okay. Perfect. So uh, you're trying to roll under 55. So whenever I, I say this at a plus 20 or this at a plus 30 or at a minus 10, you're always plusing or minusing that from your, your base skill. Okay, it's not uh, the dice roll skill. Okay, thank you. See, I told yeah. you you're going to 
explain it to me. Okay. No, 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 don't worry. That's perfect. So you were trying to roll under 55. Right. How did you do? So I did it. I rolled a 36. Woo! Great. That's perfect. So that means you also, I will oh, say, yeah. you also know something about these sorts of towns. Is that a town this size uh, usually has a, a mayor, a burgermeister, um, as they are known, um, who is the person that is in charge of the town. So these are a couple of options for things you guys might want to want to check out. These are people that usually might have information about this kind of stuff. So yeah, if it, um, essentially my question for you guys now is like, what do you want to do? Um, okay. Where do you want to go? Is there? Do you want to just? Uh, there's also taverns. There's all the usual sorts of places you can go qu quiz people. As a white man, I'm going to impose my opinion here, and <laughs> very loudly. And I'm going to say I think we should go see this Burgermeister guy. Uh, we're, there's too many people in this town. You guys told me uh, you perceived. Uh, maybe we can ask him what's going on. But I'm also open to ideas. But also, then I'll just say my opinion again really loudly. So go for it. great, that's good, and such. Intricate characterization from Phil. It really is. Uh, yeah, yeah. To see. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. I think uh, just, yeah, Lawrence is like, uh, yes, it would seem to be advised to seek the knowledge of the temporal authorities of this town. If the burger is, does not provide the information, then perhaps the wardens will be more obliging. That's a good Since idea. Can Marigold offer an opinion? Marigold can do whatever she wants, Gil. Yeah. Mar um, I, Marigold, believe that there must be some kind of um, evil afoot in the surrounding environs, mm -hmm. which is driving all these people into the safety of the enclosure of this town. And perhaps um, we should ask some of the people who are living by the wall why they have come here as well. Mm, That's a good idea. I, I, I would love it. I don't listen. I don't want to force anything on anyone, but I'd love it if Marigold always started every sentence saying, "I Marigold." <laughs> <laughs> you, you, she, you are an ethereal creature that lives in the woods, um, and uh, so these sorts of airs and graces are very much in character for. Mm -hmm. for <laughs> um, yeah, well, listen, guys, it's up to you. I like this. There's a, there's a, a wide breadth of ideas, all very good ideas. Um, does anyone have a strong feeling of, uh, of what to do? I'll say as she disappears around the corner, Francisca Kessler looks over her shoulder and is like, get a fucking move on, um, and, uh, and disappears again. Out of sight. Um, Clutching four donkeys. As, as, a, as a white man, I, as a woodsman, I feel that like my, <laughs> my solution is still correct, but I'm going to find a way to get to it still. I do agree that we should ask uh, these people around here because they may have some information we can ask the Burgermeister. Well, there are people right here, yeah. So it, yeah. it does it make sense that you are, you know, th this family that has just been shoved out of this wood store is now standing in the street kind of shivering and, and looking a bit worried about where to go. They have uh, bindles, you know, uh, sticks with handkerchiefs full of stuff and um, uh, uh, the father and mother. It's a, it's, a, it's a nuclear family. It's a father, a mother and two little uh, children. And they are, both the parents are laden, like pack animals with huge, um, big, uh, it looks like they've brought everything they could possibly bring with them from wherever they've come. The two children, oh, this is touching. The little boy has a little sort of corn dolly type thing that he's, that he's dangling sadly in one hand. The little girl is putting on a brave face. You can tell she's frightened. She doesn't know what's going on, but she doesn't want her little brother to be scared. She's probably 12, he's six. They won't last the winter. But anyway, um, uh, let's be honest. No matter what you guys do here, grim. Yes. It's grim. This is a grim game, guys. This game is famous for being uh, a grizzly and, and um, grim dark. Exactly. Okay. I mean, I think I, I see where you're where you're looking, and as a and as yeah, Lawrence Lawrence just makes a makes a ramrod straight beeline over to the over to the peasants and um sure you you see I'll say first of all give me uh give me an intuition roll as as you're coming up all of you can do this so this is intuition um at a plus twenty intuition I'm pretty sure it's called intuition again apologies is, yeah. secret yes. keeper Clint if it's got a different name yeah yeah uh, oh, I got it shoot I I I rolled a fifty eight and minus fifty. That's okay. Again, uh, Marigold, perhaps being being as she is a, of a different species, it's a little bit harder to, to judge always the humans' uh, uh, emotions. Yeah, um, they're very short-lived. They're a confusing species to you. Um, I would say Marigold is like 
65 or something like that. She's much older I'm than 50 you mine. 59. 50 mine. <laughs> 50 mine. That's L for nine. 50 mine. That is, uh, yes, true. Um, yeah, so 50. Yeah, so she's old, but that's young for an elf. You guys are all pretty young. Oh, yeah. I think, um, uh, Smilar, you're quite young as well, aren't you? You're like in your 20s, 24 or 24, something. 24, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and how did you get on, Smilar, in your in your intuition? Uh, I'm I'm I'm, fr I'm a pretty lunk-headed guy, you know. Uh, so <laughs> yeah. I, I rolled a 66 on a 30. I'm I'm more of a Great. shoot from the hip kind of guy. <laughs> yeah, you're you're very good with woodsman. Other woodsman, you yeah. can read like a, an <laughs> open me, book. Yeah, but give me a tree people, I'll drop it down. I'll tell you, boy. All these but, all these town folk that don't talk yeah. about trees all the time. These right? big city people, I don't I don't get them. <laughs> right, I, I just Lawrence, turn to you and walk over, and I'm like. Save your save your brain for reading the rings of a recently chopped tree, and just kind of like, and then just and get and just walk up and approach this peasant, and I'm like way too close, like yes, invading and you the can tell immediately face. they are both terrified, like yes. because you are wearing the accoutrement of a mm -hmm. witch hunter, like they know exactly who you are. <laughs> oh, but basically, no. witch hunters, everybody. Is terrified of witch hunters because yeah. witch hunters tend to do things like, "Wow, you guys had a really good crop this year. Must have been witches. Burn yes, them you down." Yes, the bones. Perhaps <laughs> the torture will let you come to a confession. Uh, so yeah, I, I'm all up so, in your yeah, face. You, you can see they're very like, uh, 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 like, "Hello." You uh, seem to be an outlander to uh, Grenmacht. What has brought you to the town? Oh, well, uh, yes, that's right. Um, uh, my my wife and I and, and my children we're uh, we're from one of the other, other villages uh, out uh, 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 further down uh, closer to the mountain. Are your and own walls not safe enough to hold you that you must clog the byways here? Not anymore. Yeah, Byersdorf is the name of our village, or was. Uh oh, what uh, happened says. there? <laughs> Yes, thank you for taking up my enormously huge conversational cue, Wood Elf. Um, I, I couldn't have laid it out more, more heavily if I put it on a platter. Uh, it was burned down. Burned down by beastmen uh, ever since the, the snows came. Uh, and the soldiers from Schloss Stolzenberg up in the valley stopped coming to answer our calls. The beastmen have got more and more uh, 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 bold coming out of the woods. Slaughtering, burning, Any unexplained kidnapping, um, kidnappings or disappearances from your village. Oh, certainly. Uh, you name it, we've had it. I hear that's going around. What's that say? Any cousins being taken. All of my cousins were taken. I had eighteen cousins in that village. It was very difficult to find someone to marry because we were all too related. But then. Something came and took us all. And I tell you, every crime, every depredation, every terrible thing you can imagine has befallen the people of Byersdorf. We had a really unfortunate pyramid scheme thing hit us mm -hmm. right before the snow came. So as you can imagine, it's been a real double blow. There oh, no. is nothing I hate more than the dark and occultic work of the witches except a really dark multi-level marketing scheme. <laughs> we all fell for it. They Don't told us we were all in. It's not okay it's people. It's uh, not. Can you tell us a little bit more about this pyramid scheme? <laughs> uh, y yes. So first of all, someone came with a load of trowels. <laughs> because <I am>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you see, I sell you a bunch of trowels and you sell them on. And then you give me a, p a chunk of your profits. And you, the people that sell those trowels pay you. It yes, seemed but, to make sense at the time. But you see the client base inevitably shrink so that no one at the bottom can reap the benefits of the person at the top. It's that's basic all right mathematics. For you big city, all you big city fellows in your mathematics. We don't have that sort of thing in Byersdorf. It tore through us. And that was before the beast men came, who, to be fair, were much worse because they did kill, burn, and, and uh, slaughter a large number of us. I have a question for you. Yes, have you noble seen wood elf. Um, have you seen a murderous um, man uh, come through here? Was there a man perhaps covered in blood from murdering a, 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 a highway patrol officer? Oh, I, I can't say that I have. We've only been here for a day and a half uh, in that time. Oh, we thought we got it pretty sweet when we found space in that lady's woodshed. But that, then my son was bitten by a mouse and he screamed in the night and so she kicked us out. No drops of blood that you've seen? Oh, there's blood. Perhaps. I've seen more blood than you could possibly imagine. Right. And not just I, when my son was bitten by a mouse. <laughs> I turn to the, to, the, to the little boy and like crouch next to him and I'm just like, 
When he is pain, also terrified. Yes, yeah. <laughs> when pain comes, and it will, you must learn that your mind can control the pain. Isn't the that witchcraft? The spirit rules the body, not the body, the spirit. Did, did, he bursts into tears. Yeah. He buries <laughs> his face in his sister's chest. We are but a spirit that wears a mask of flesh. Thank you for this information. <laughs> Look to your <laughs> prayers. Look to your prayers. <laughs> and I, 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 tur- I turn to, to the mother and father and say, we really appreciate that this is, is you, you did a really great job. Um, well, I'm going to be real. I don't think the kids are going to make it. You might want to eat them at some point. I just, just say, and there's a lot of people here. Huh? As, as you turn and leave. It's, you see it's old and time. <laughs> It's olden times. We don't care about kids. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh dear. Um, is there any anything else you would like to ask these guys? Um, uh, yeah, I have one more question, question about these beastmen. It, uh, oh, was yes. there anything that preceded the beastmen? Did anything that seemed to draw them out, or oh, they smell something horrible. You can smell them coming before they even arrive. Uh, that's what I found. But we were lucky. We got out once we heard that they'd burnt. Uh, Snitzenberg next door, uh, and uh, uh, the 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 uh, the ferry house down down by the river. Uh, we knew they were coming our direction, so so we fled. But others remained, and I haven't seen any of them coming in. And then w- w- one last question: Does the name um, Bruno Falls mean anything to you? Oh, I I am sorry. I, I, no, not really. Is he an actor? I don't, we don't really get much actors. We had a troop of actors came through the village last year. Uh, unfortunately, they also conned us. We all bought tickets and then they just left. <laughs> We're quite really. stupid people. Um, not me, of course. I'm intelligent, but the village as a whole. Um, so, Thank you yeah. for your time. Um, Thank you. Best of luck to you. <laughs> and the, the, uh, the, the little child, uh, the little girl reaches forward and like touches the hem of like Marigold's uh, uh, fur coat. And it's just like, oh, I and oh. her hand away. <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> the elves are mean. It's true what they say about elves. They eat children. Respect my personal space, child. <laughs> right. Classic, I don't haughty. understand humans. You said I don't Classic, understand. Classic haughty elf behavior. No, I girl, this is perfect. You're nailing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, Choose a burger then. Right. Yeah, let's, okay. Let's yeah. So, I, I. so um, uh, you walk a little bit, a bit deeper into the center of Grandmark. This is, again, a sort of fairly standard town. Uh, close to the center, there are some quite big sort of brick and timber sort of Tudor style uh, buildings. Um, and you find yourself at some sort of central plots, uh, a sort of big uh, square open space, probably where the market is held when, uh, when there is a market in, in Grenmacht. And on one side of it, there's quite a big, imposing looking building. And outside, there is a huge, long queue of folks um, uh, all uh, huddling and frozen. I cut More to the of front of the of... line. <laughs> nice. I like it. So... Um, someone tries to stop you. A, a larger man steps in front of you. Larger uh, than me? Uh, yeah, because you, you're tall, but you're quite slender. You're athletic. I mean, but in your woolly coat, you look pretty big. But he's this is a guy, a big, burly, um, like a, a blacksmith or something. He's he's got he's a huge fella. So if you want to continue to barge past him, you're going to need to give me an intimidate roll, Gil, okay. or a charm roll if you want to try and like oh. talk your way past him. Okay, Whichever I gotta, one you would prefer. Um, at a plus twenty. Okay, I got, uh, let's do, let's do charm. Okay, so you're doing charm at a plus 20. Okay, I rolled a 23 and my charm level is 42. Okay, so that means your charm, so you were rolling under 62 because you're at a plus 20. So that means you succeeded by four success levels, which is uh, very good. Um, I will explain success levels at a certain point, but don't worry about them right now. Um, so you did a really, you did a really good job. So he kind of goes to step in front of you, and you like let your hood fall back from your face, and he's like, "Wow, an elf!" And and you uh, give him a yeah, a lot of this business, precisely what you're doing right now. <laughs> uh, sort of, yeah, you look like a character selection in a video game. You're sort of moving <laughs> slowly. No one's quite <laughs> sure. <laughs> Rotation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sh- shambling you just play. spin on the spot in a kind of um, uh, impressive uh, almost a moonwalky type way oh, and, uh, and he's like 
wow and like falls back <laughs> in amazement um and you give him a little smile and it genuinely uh has like an effect on him like he has drunk a hot drink he feels the warmth of your <laughs> strange alien elven presence uh wash over him and he remembers it for a while um for a couple of days he keeps telling people i saw an elf you know uh, up near the burgermeister's building and people are like yeah yeah sure mate all right uh, absolutely um and then um one night he uh, is going for a pee in the middle of the night and he's knocked down and killed by a cart unfortunate um it's why the problems with these guys living on the street in this frozen grim dark well every every npc you guys meet is gonna die <laughs> I mean, we're all going to die. We Love all know it. that. Right, anyway, yeah. this is fun. It's Saturday story, morning. Definitely. We're having a good time. <laughs> and so, yeah, uh, led by Marigold, you guys push your way past the crowd. You guys are also pretty heavily armed. You're all I, uh, I mean mug him as rough, we go. tough. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, there's a lot of mean mugs um, uh, being seen. And you find yourselves um, in, in the antechamber to um, uh, there, there is a, a sign over the door. Uh, who which of you who of you can read? Um, I, uh, it should Lawrence say in your can talents. Read. In your talent section, it says read slash write, depending on whether you, if you can. Nope. Nope, I'm illiterate. <laughs> okay, that's okay. So two of you are illiterate, but luckily our resident psychopath, Lawrence, is a reader. <laughs> Leave this to uh, me. Yeah, brought up with a copy of, like, the Book of Sigma. He just read mm -hmm. that over and over again as a child. Um, and, uh, yeah, and you see over Knowledge the Knowledge is power. <laughs> yeah. I agree to disagree. <laughs> Uh, library. Power is power. Right. Power is power. Power baby. is knowledge. Yeah. Uh, you um, see, yes, a sign that says Burgermeister, and a a very small, very reedy little man um, uh, is like, uh, excuse me, you can't just come in here whenever you like. There's uh, uh, there's a queue. Excuse me, please. Do you mind? I'm so sorry. And he's um, trying to sort of shuffle you away. I um, run up to him with my dagger. And can I roll an intimidate? You sure can. And because you pulled out your dagger, you can uh, get your Intimidate at a plus 30. Hell yeah, Dad. Uh, let, me, let me see what my Intimidate is. Uh, okay. I should also see plus 30. to roll for him. I'm, I'm going to see what his, how cool he is. Is he cool under pressure? Is he used <laughs> to having daggers waved at him? Uh, all right, I rolled a, it's a... It's a 63, and I rolled a 67. So uh... Okay, so you made it. He also... I rolled his cool, and he failed he rolled over his cool and he rolled a double so this is an interesting time to talk about this if you roll a double if you succeed on a double that is a critical success so um that means you do something really really well he critically failed his ability to stay cool in the oh no no, no. I i'm sorry i failed it, it was the, with the plus 30 it was 63 i just oh, I barely see. failed oh i see 60 i thought it was against the 67 or you rolled a 67 against i rolled a 67 and he, it, Copy that. it was a 63 yeah well here's the thing good news even though, so you came up and were like, um, like, hey, bitch, get out of the way and try to like twiddle your knife in your hands and you dropped it. Um, but <laughs> he just saw the knife. Oh, he saw the knife and he was, he was so nervous that he immediately shit himself. Um, literally, he crapped himself in front of you because uh, he critically failed his attempts to stay cool. Um, and um, uh, you see him really, really panic. He's not used to this sort of thing. This is normally a peaceful market town he's not used to dealing with all these folks and these rough tough fellows and he just like <laughs> backs away from you into the corner and um the door is now right in front of you i presume you you guys uh, pass through the door and inside you find the burgermeister of uh grenmacht um who i believe we have an image Ooh. of Ooh. it's coming somewhere uh but as it as it's on its way oh, you please. see a uh uh, you see a kind of uh, balding man in um, uh, there. He is oh. um, with uh, oh, and they got the I nail as well. That's Grouch. very cool. I like that. Was kind of like a sports thing. <laughs> I love the right, right, you're yeah, seventeen football. and yeah, playing as like quarterback. A robot come through. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> da, 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 da. sophomore from the University of North Carolina. <laughs> yes, Helvig von Schulzberg. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Heno Schweinegesuchter is Great. his name. Uh, and yes, you see this kind of bald, chubby, nervous man. Can we have it back up? I like the picture. Oh, uh, yeah. There we go. Is this um, Will I love, By the way, this is all, yes, all art today is courtesy of our dearly beloved friend, Will Potteroff. Um, it's who great, has, Will. <laughs> it's really it's good. fab. I'm he's loving done, it. He's done fabulous work. Uh, yes, so you see this like rather nervous man from behind his desk. He's not, he's like, oh, uh, who, I, who are you? I, I, I approach him and offer him a drink from my flask. Oh, Ooh. cool! He's this. He's 
definitely a bit confused. So give me a charm roll as well, because that is, um, you know, you're, you're making a peaceful offering. Uh-oh. Um, at a plus 20. 97. Now, that is also a critical failure, because if it... If it um, uh, <laughs> we need no charm. So, so I, I, in order to make things... So in the game, I'm the way the game works... I'm charmless. You're like, yeah. here, you want some? Oh, I think <laughs> you just, yeah, you just <laughs> slosh a bunch of Throw alcohol it. into his face. Yeah. <laughs> and he's like, ah! What? What's happening? Uh, what's happening? Uh, he's confused. Uh, Rutger, uh, Rutger. And you hear the man in the, uh, in the antechamber just like, uh, like running out the front door to leave. He's like, uh, who, who are you? What are you doing? Uh, I don't have anything. Um, I, I'm just a humble mayor. Uh, and uh, you see his eyes dart to the corner where there is a sizable chest that is presumably full of, full of gold and treasure. He's not very good at hiding things. Uh, 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 I run up and grab the me? chest. <laughs> and I say to him, if you want this bag, you need to tell us what we want, what we need to know. <laughs> Uh, okay, I, I'll, I'll tell you. What, what, uh, what do you want? I don't, I don't even know who you are. What do you want? I'm going to be honest. No, no. My, my, my thought was, I, I really didn't think about the questions. I was really more snatching the chest. <laughs> uh, tell the us, why, is world, why is everybody, please, why is everybody please, in here? Please, please, before, before you are once again soaked by the spirits <laughs> of my elephant friend or find your gold purloined by Smiler, <laughs> please to answer some questions regarding the fugitive Bruno Feltz. Uh, okay, when well, that happens, his face falls. Um, oh. And, and his face falls, and uh, he looks even more, um, <laughs> if, if it's possible, he gets even more shifty <laughs> than he was before. Uh, and he's like, uh, 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 oh, it's got hot in here, hasn't it? Um, uh, uh, like, he, he's, he couldn't be more suspicious. Um, and... Um, uh, yeah, he's like, um, I, uh, Bruno, oh, that name sounds familiar. The, the, oh, 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 yes. Oh, he's that terrible murderer, right? The, the, the butcher of Brunstad. Well, we don't, <laughs> we don't get anything uh, like that uh, in, in sleepy old Grenmark. I, 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 assure, I assure you. I slap him. Oh, very good, Gil. <laughs> okay, give me a, uh, so I'm going to count that as an intimidate roll. Um, he's already very intimidated by you. And also, you sloshed him with alcohol. So you've got an intimidate roll at like a plus 40. So that uh, means you're intimidate plus 40 and then try and roll under that. I, I, a 34. I rolled a 34. And my intimidate is 34. Okay. So you're, you're rolling under a 74 because of your plus 40. So you also succeeded by four success levels. So yeah, I mean, you just, you line this slap up beautifully. And it makes the perfect, like, talk whap noise as it hits him in the face and he's like ah, 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 and he starts sobbing and he's clearly, and start talking. you know oh, more than I'm sorry. you say and it is clear unless you want my friend to work her arts upon you more I would hope that you would be more obliging with the truth I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm sorry please please master witch hunter I, I, please keep the elf away from me She's, she's, she's crazy. Uh, uh, okay, all right. Look, please, I, I'll tell you, but you, you, you have to try and uh, keep it to yourselves, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm running for re-election, and, and I, I can't have people knowing that, that terrible, the butcher of Brunstad was here, and now I've no idea where he's gone. But yes, he passed through here a couple of days ago. He, he killed one of our road wardens, and, and then made his way up, up past the, the town and up into the valley. You see, we're, um, we sit uh, uh, at the foot of the Grey Mountains here, uh, just up there, and he sort of points back up through the wall uh, behind him. Uh, you can't see anything, but he points in the general direction. Uh, that's where the valley of Stolzenberg lies, and uh, we pay fealty to, to the Graf von Stolzenberg here. Um, they're a big... Uh, um, uh, oh yeah, here we go. Oh, here is uh, here's the mm. map of Stoltenberg. In fact, he points. He points. Uh, he's Where like, are oh, we? I, I don't know. We are. So we are off down to the south. You're not on this map yet, but oh. this is what lies up uh, in the hills above you. So. Really, uh, if your screen is the same as mine, you are basically where you are, Gil. That is the entrance. You guys are lying some way, probably. I mean, just uh, if you if you extended your your right arm, Gil. Um, at, out to, to your sides, like this, 
Um, you're where your hand is uh, on the map, if that makes sense. Oh, I see. Um, so you guys are a little off to the left-hand side of this map right now. And he and the, and the Burgermeister, Heno Schweinegesuchter, um, sweating. Uh, uh, a large red welt starting to appear on his mm-hmm. cheek from where he got whapped by Marigold. Um, uh, it's like, oh, I don't know why I was pointing through the wall. Yeah, on the map, you could see the, the Duchy of Stolzenberg is, uh, it, this is it here. It, it's up in the mountain pass. It, it produces some of the finest wool in the, in, the, in the whole of the empire. And they ship the wool down to us and we sell it here. So, so we pay fealty to them. But he, he, he was last seen heading up, up the pass I, I, into the mountains. And who was it who into saw him actually uh, go in that direction? Well, the, uh, the, the one remaining road warden we've got here, he, he said that that's what he saw. And uh, he... Um, Where is he stationed? He, uh, well, you'll probably find him either at the watch house or in the tavern these days. We've had a terrible time of it of late. You see, uh, ordinarily we, we call up the mountainside for support from, from the, the Graf soldiers. They've got a big castle up there, big garrison of, of soldiers, and they usually come down and protect all of us down here and all the folk in the valley. But since the snow set in, and since this all started, we've sent many messages up the mountain. We've never heard anything back. What aren't you telling us? Ah, please, keep it away from me. Um, <laughs> what, what can I tell you? <laughs> When I get then, then, then Smiler walks in, he's trying to play good cop, and he goes, "What aren't you telling us?" <laughs> I, I love that our good cop bad cop scenario has all devolved into bad cop bad cop bad cop. Yeah, we yeah. have like two and, thugs and a fanatic and a religious fanatic. Three bad cops. Um, <laughs> and he's like, "I don't know what else to tell you." Um, uh, uh, we uh, uh, our main. Uh, uh, um, what did he uh, give you, or what did you have to give him? He's he's armed. He's heavily armed, and he also, well, he took two lads from the village. See, two of our baddest apples, um, Klaus Stinsel and um, uh, Rutger. Not my Rutger out here, but his son, uh, Rutger Junior. Uh, Rutger Kinsler is his name, and he uh, uh, he put him under some sort of spell. I mean, they've both been bad lads, but but. Uh, when he, as soon as he got uh, got near him, he they they just fell in lockstep with him. Uh, they even took part in the murder of the road warden, but we're trying Under to keep that from everybody else in the village. Huh? Sort of spell. Are you saying that this Bruno Feltz is in league with forces of magic and hexencraft? Look, I wasn't there. Okay, I I had nothing to do with that. I I've never seen anything like that in my life. I swear, uh, I'm faithful to Sigma, and he gives you the twin-tailed comet signal, which is sign, which is this. Uh, that's like their version of like the cross mm-hmm. is is the twin tail comet, and he's like, I, I I swear I'm a good servant to Sigma. I I, I follow all the strictures. I, I haven't done anything like that, but it's just that's what they said. That's what the ro- the other road warden said. Moritz Could, Dawn. I roll. Can I roll a perception to see if he if I you can if absolutely yeah, like an insight to see if he's everybody intuition. can roll yeah. intuition to yeah. see if he's telling you the truth. At a plus, you guys have walloped him. You've knocked him around a bit. Mm-hmm. You, you, you know, you've intimidated him. I'd say you can do it like a plus 30. You should have a pretty good chance of working out what... what you're oh, I had an cr- incredible success, a four. That is an incredible Ooh. success. This is a critical success. I'm a shoot from the hip kind of guy, you know. <laughs> yeah. Smilar is starting to really get a feel for these townsfolk. Um, ha- yeah. Having uh, been traditionally, as we said, tree and woodsman-based <laughs> intuition, he's suddenly like, oh, I see how these people work. And yeah, you think he's telling you the truth. He seems to be pretty much uh, uh, shooting from the hip, um, as, as it were. Um, and, um, you know, he, he looks at you imploringly. His eyes flicker from, uh, he looks at Marigold in some terror, and then he looks down at the, the, the crate, that, um, the, the, the lock box that uh, Smilar is holding, and he's like, <laughs> <laughs> you can't quite tell what he's worried about. He's like, but please, listen, uh, if you're going to go after him, by all means. Uh, um, in fact, we'd be very grateful. Uh, um, but uh, just uh, please don't mention the, the local lads, because like I say, I am uh, running for re-election in the spring, and uh, it doesn't look too good if on my watch uh, two of our town's uh, tearaways uh, have been turned into psychopathic murderers. I, I agree with that on one. Oh. I, I agree I, with that on one condition. As oh. long as you join the Eat the Witch movement. <laughs> Do you leave a little badge? 
Yeah, I have a little side. I have a little bag. You got badges. <laughs> and a pamphlet. Mar- that I had to- Marigold. <laughs> friends, uh, friends, let's walk away to a private corner. I have a proposition. All right. I, I, I follow something. Marigold, but still holding the chest. I'm not 100% mm-hmm. sure if I'm giving it back yet. I, I, uh, I, I move back almost, but like never breaking eye contact with the burger, just like, you're saying he's a witch. Very well. And then I'm then just kind of like, what is this proposition of yours? Okay, I, Marigold, have a suggestion. I know you two... <laughs> Thank really you for the formality. Like- <laughs> I know you two really don't like witches, but what if we join up with some witches and we ask them to cast a perception spell so they can see where he is, so we can cut a lot of this bullshit out and just go to him. And then we'll trick the witches into thinking that we're in alliance with them, but then you can capture them and eat them after we use them for their perception. I dig that. Wow. As long as I get to eat witches, I'm fine. This is, of now, course, assuming that we can find some local witches. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, Burgermeister, you got any witches lying around? Also, no, is no, that one of their uh, powers? No, 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 no. No, 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 absolutely not. I, 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 I would never allow for something like that to happen in my town. We don't have any witches here. Nothing like that. Certainly not. Oh, uh, yeah, because, knew... like, two young local lads weren't kidnapped. Uh, oh, well, that's the thing. It wasn't so much like they were kidnapped. They went along willingly, uh, excited, hungrily almost. All right. Which witches have you expelled from your community, and where are they now living? And take them us to them now. Uh, well, um, so, Mistress Elf, uh, uh, forgive me, for, for I um, certainly don't want to get... <laughs> whacked in the face again but um, here's the thing you see uh, um, traditionally around these parts and uh, in the empire in general if we ever uh, suspect anybody is a witch we tend to sort of burn them <sighs> good man <laughs> uh, uh, thank you Master well, Richard, who does you. anybody do any spells of perception here in town well um no, we don't. We, we don't really. We don't have a wizard in the town. Um, I, I've heard tell that some of them in like the College of Light and stuff in 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 Old Dorf, they can do things like that, scrying spells. But I, but I, you know, if you wanted to, you could go and talk to Moritz Dawn, the the uh, the the road warden who witnessed his exit, and he could tell you if if he knows where he went. That's uh, all right. We can do that. Fine. One last question though: Do you have any like cooked yes. witch meat lying around? <laughs> Because you said you burned them. I'm just saying. <laughs> I, or if you guys are already eating them, I get it. <laughs> right. Uh, cause, but, you, cause, but you're joking because you don't really eat witches, right? <laughs> hey, read the pamphlet. I mean, I can't, but you should. <laughs> uh, okay. I said okay. the same thing when he described it to me, but no, it is all too real. It seems like it's not a metaphor. He, he really does it. Uh, no. Okay. okay. We're keeping this money, by the way. <laughs> what? What? <laughs> I mean, mug him. And, <laughs> sure, you mean mug him. Marigold, uh, like, uh, wraps the top of the, of the lockbox and it's like, right, peace, see you around. And he's um, like, uh, okay, okay, I can't stop you. Uh, but, but I should be making I, I, a point. I feel, like, I, feel like, I feel like this is maybe an affront to the law that our officious little jerk Lawrence would be like, put his hand on the chest and be like, come, 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 come. This is not the time for mere robbery. Indeed, Herr Burgermeister, you have been most obliging. And then I maybe open it up and say, but, but uh, in order for us not to destroy your political reputation in town, you're asking of us a favor. And for favors, favors should be returned in kind. And so uh. I think perhaps a tax is only... Uh, right in such a situation, and maybe I distribute what what Lawrence can justify to himself as a reasonable amount amongst the three of us. <laughs> okay, uh, sure. I'm going to say that each one of you gains a one gold crown, Heck and yeah. he very begrudgingly. That is quite a lot of money. That is like, uh, you know, I'm trying to think what the equipment would be right now. It's like 150 bucks or something like that. Um, you know, uh, maybe a bit more. And um, yeah, you just like doop doop doop, and he you watch him like absolute agony uh in uh, in terms of his his like face he's like mm-hmm. and for you and for you mistress elf um and he <laughs> places it in your in your hand um and then he's like now um please 
<laughs> no, excuse me, I, I've got much to attend to. We've got all these bloody refugees coming in here causing trouble. It's not my fault that their, their villages got burnt down and now I've got to find a place for them all to live somewhere. And, and I say to my compatriots, if you weren't so eager to kill and eat all the witches, we could be aligning ourselves with them and really speeding up this whole process. Sounds like also, someone who's never eaten a witch before. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> also, I feel like we could use the witches to place a spell on the, what is it, the beast men who were, who the were, yes. The beast and then maybe we could turn them into sort of an army of sorts that could work on our behalf. I dig that. Yeah. As long as they get to eat the witches, I'm fine. Mm -hmm. We'd have uh, to yeah. hold off on eating the witches. The temptations bit. of the witchcraft. Oh, it seems, it seems that it will provide you with so much power. Yes, but that way lies chaos, Marigold. You would find you power, should... but you would only end up corrupting your soul. Eh. So, uh, as wait, you guys I... are discussing the, well, uh, well, as you guys wait, are discussing Smilar. this, oh. Smilar. Smilar. Yes. Oh, I thought you were interjecting, Smilar. Oh no, I I I I have a I have a plan, but I'm going to wait. I'll wait for him to finish. I, I, well, I'll wait say, for the face to finish. As you guys discuss uh, this stuff, um, tramp, tramp, tramp. Uh, you hear hear um, heavy booted feet behind you coming through the door, uh, and a voice like, "What the fuck are you lot doing in here?" Um, and Francisca Kessler appears in the doorway, being like. I've just seen some bloke outside that shit himself. What are you doing? I sent you here to ask some questions, not fucking turn the place upside down. Are you all right, mate? She looks over and there's, there's Schweiner goes up to in his chair, like big red welt on his face and like drenched in some sort of strange elven alcohol. And he's like, he looks from her to the three of you, to the lockbox, back to her. And it's like, yes, I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Um, yes, of course, he's, been, he's been very cooperative. <laughs> I was just yeah, having fine. a, I was just having a, a little <laughs> chat with them, and I told them everything I know about the the dreadful uh, Bruno Faltz. Um, uh, uh, and they they were just leaving, I think, weren't they? Uh, and she looks at you. Is that right? You just you're leaving, yeah. are you? You lot? Yeah. So we we feel like we should go find this. Uh, the the where we were the cops called the what? Uh, Row Warden. So yeah. We feel like we should find this Roe Warden because it's going to help us in our quest. Right. I hear that you can go to a tavern, and I'll be real. I just robbed this dude. I could use a drink. We should probably let's go to the tavern and see if we can find this uh, the warden. All right. Come on, you lot. And she turns and stumps out. And then um, uh, as she's walking down the stairs, I think she's like, right, how much did you get out of him? <laughs> Three coins. Three gold cut. Great. Well, a third of that, a fourth of that's mine. So. No. Um, <laughs> Wait, I got an idea. I, I grab one more I grab one more coin out and, and give it. All right, give me a okay, Phil, how's how's how we're gonna try and do that? Is do you have uh give me a I don't think you've got sleight of hand or anything like that. I don't think that's a basic skill. I think that's a specific thing for sort of thiefy type people. So let's let's say why don't you give me a dexterity roll? Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna say uh flat. This is for you to have pocketed uh, an extra coin without him where's, noticing. Uh, where's before. dexterity? Uh, so that is up in your characteristics. That's like oh, a okay. basic characteristic. So it should be up there. It's just dead. Oh, I see it. Um, and it's the initial or current? Uh, it's the current. Okay. Is what you want. All right. So it's the flat, you said? Yeah. It's quite tricky. Uh, I see. So um, it was a 35 and I rolled a, uh, a 50. So like I try to, but I'm real, I'm real bad. Yeah. So as you're, <laughs> like, as you're leaving. Well, look at look, just why like, we try and steal this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Just like, some hey, of the I'm coins like this. clatter onto the floor, and you make eye contact with him, and he's like, "Come on, like <laughs> really?" And, and, and you're too embarrassed. You're like, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and you like catch up to the other the other three, and she's like, <laughs> and and Kessler's like, "Yeah, you can bet." I'll tell you what, you can stand me a drink in the tavern when we question this bloke, uh, and you cross the plats that you were in earlier, the marketplace, and make your way like almost directly ahead in front of this building. There is a huge um, in this feels like a sort of a giant coaching house kind of thing, tavern type place. And you like that, Gil? I defecate in the street. <laughs> Is this a sign that you need to go to the bathroom now in real life? 
I like that that's a code name. My character shits. Like, oh, okay. Huh? Why don't you take a pause, everybody? Um, yeah, you don't have to defecate in the street if you don't want to. But if you want to, you can. As and you don't need to roll anything for it. Oh, I see. Like, oh, right outside his front door. You're just like, okay. <laughs> just so he knows. <laughs> okay, so. Is this an elf thing? You mark your territory in this way? This was not a. Um, Su suffice to say, further back down the queue, the guy that was boasting about meeting an elf moments ago is like still saying, "You didn't see that person that came past me? That was that was an elf!" Like, oh, uh, there she is! And uh, <laughs> and then you you crouch down as shit, and your hood is up, and they're like, the people are like, "That's just a, that's a crazy person, isn't it?" I think <laughs> that's not an elf. You fucking moron! Um, and that guy's social status like drops twenty points over the course of this thing. So you make your way across the square to the inn, um, which is, uh, there's a big painted sign outside of it. And you see on the sign, there is like a, a, a knight um, in the sort of um, uh, colors in, with blue and white colors with a big chevron on it and like a kind of panther rampant on the, on the side on his shield. And then he's holding an orc's head, like a severed orc's head in his hand. <laughs> Um, and it is called uh, the uh, and uh, it says the Stolzenberg Arms over the uh, over the top of the thing, and you make your way inside. It's low ceilings. Hey, um, before we go in there, yes. can I roll a uh, lore Reich one to see if I recognize anything about? Yeah, you can, Phil. That's a great shout. Well done. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's yeah, that. I should have prompted you to do. And as oh, he's great. doing that, I have an entertain sing, and perhaps I entertain oh. the rest of our group with a song. Gil, give me an entertain sing. So you're going to roll that, but you're going to roll it at a minus 10 because you just took a shit in the street. Um, <laughs> and people tend to react less well to buskers that have recently defecated in public. Oh, well, I, I rolled a 33 and I have a... Oh, that was so nearly good. 37. Oh, oh but was that 37 with the minus 10? I don't know. No. Well, what's, what's your entertain sing roll? What does On, that say? Uh, the die say 30, so that... <laughs> Uh huh. But what does it say? Oh, oh, but then it says, "Oh, so you just missed it." No. Because you were at thirty-seven, so you would have made it if you hadn't shit in the street. And I think that's a good lesson for all of us, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah, don't shit in the street. A actions have consequences. All right. Um, but you could try again in a minute. Maybe when you get inside the tavern, uh, then you won't be at a penalty. Well, yeah, uh, they w they wouldn't have seen me <laughs> in the street. Yeah. Oh, so you want right. to do this once you get inside the tavern? Yes. Okay, as, oh, I'm sorry. It's just as a felt charm we, we and intimidation outside. and confusion tactic. Uh, very good. Well, um, so we'll come to that in a second. So you will successfully sing in a second. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's an intimidation. I just want to get everything in the right order, though, because Phil was outside. He wanted to do a, a Reichland law roll to see if he knew okay. anything about the Stolzenbergs and about this uh, thing. So how did you do Yeah, it's like when Lyndon Johnson would hold meetings in, in the toilet and be like... <laughs> Just to intimidate a diplomat or someone, yeah. Right. Um, <laughs> so I did, uh, even with a plus or a minus, I did very well. Um, I rolled a seven uh, on a You're, 35. Oh, great. Oh, great. So, oh, okay, interesting. So I think this might mean that Smilar Balloom is from not too far away from here because the name Stolzenberg is very familiar to him. Um, this is an ancient, uh, very respected house um, of uh, the imperial aristocracy. Um, they are, are legendary for living in this, this like crazy mountainside, mountaintop castle, Schloss Stolzenberg. Um, the valley is very famous for its wool, as I think I said before. Um, they, they have uh, lots of sheep up there. That's how, how the, the, the community basically subsists up there is through, um, they have very small amount of kind of crop growing areas, but they, uh, they raise many, many sheep up there. Um, they also uh, were famous for um, their participation in um, the Battle of Blackfire Pass, which is a very famous battle in Empire history where the current emperor, Karl Franz, like crushed a big orc army about 20 years ago. And um, the then Graf von Stolzenberg was famous for killing uh, like a huge orc war boss in that battle that was atop a sort of giant uh, wyvern, which is a kind of dragon type thing. Oh, that's cool. um, and so they're, they're known as being pretty badass, like hardy mountaintop folk. And you know that the current... My Graf kind of people. Von, <laughs> yeah, the current <laughs> Graf von Stolzenberg, who is the son of, of the, the orc slayer, his name is Eric von Stolzenberg, and he is 
widely reputed to be in his father's mould, like a, a, a brave, um, good, uh, conscientious, uh, um, uh, as far as a feudal lord can be. He's, he, he, right. is, um, he does his duty. He looks after the people that, that work uh, for him and, and till his land and do all that kind of stuff, raise his sheep. Uh, so, yeah. That's, he's that's like the Downton Abbey of Warhammer. He's like it's just yes. like a real good old. It's just a real good yeah, old. Yeah, he's like a he's like a jacked up. Uh, what's that actor called? Hugh Bonneville. Hugh he's like a beef, <laughs> he's, he's like a beefcake Bonneville. Um, uh, is Eric von Stolzenberg, um, sexy Paddington dad. Um, so uh, yeah, Gil. Now she's now now that's got Marigold's attention. Paddington too. One of the best movies of all time. Agreed. Can I tell you, yep. quick aside, everybody, one of my greatest professional laments is when I just when I moved over here, I got a message from my agents in the UK saying, hey, um, uh, they want you to, to like do a tape for this new Paddington movie to play a, an explorer in it. And I, and I was like, no, are they going to fucking ruin it? Because Paddington is amazing and there's no way their modern like CGI dumb version will be any good. Um, so I didn't do it. And then it's the greatest movie of all time. Yeah, um, you thought it was going to be like Garfield, Tale of Two Kitties. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. I was just like, oh, they're going to have rapping Paddington and stuff. And he's going to skateboard in and like fucking yeah. poochie like style. Sucking marmalade flavored energy drinks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Monster marmalade flavor. Um, <laughs> So yeah, you guys, you guys pass like inside the tavern. People. I don't know what you guys. <laughs> right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, you pass inside the tavern, and almost immediately, Marigold peels off to the left to where there is a little stage. And no, don't worry, because you've already, don't worry, you've already done your shit outside, and you go and you start singing up on the stage. You just take the stage. I think, unless you want to also shit in here, and I can't stop you. I cannot oh boy. stop you. Here comes the drama queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, more, sing. more people for Marigold does, to intimidate. Know. Oh God, I don't know where it all comes from. <laughs> Let her do her, her intimidating performance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> la 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 la. <laughs> oh. oh, what siren song is this? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it is, but I like it. <laughs> Oh. Again, a, a st- Elvish baby, <laughs> Elvish dances on the air. Astonishingly, ear. astonishingly, because Gil made a successful role, if this entertains, charms, and intimidates all the people. <laughs> this, this siren song, this Elvish siren song, la 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 la, la 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 la, um, has got the maybe the people in the Stolzenberg Arms are not used to seeing uh, any form of entertainment whatsoever. <laughs> they live in squad, and right? a wood elf. It's the a wood elf seemingly warming up um, uh, is enough. Uh, can I make one quick pitch? Is like everyone <laughs> is like the, the guy that was that's been talking about elves and no one's seen it like walks in like right after we leave this whenever it is. Right. And he's like, I swear right, to right, God, right. there's an elf. There's an elf. And everyone's like, yeah, yeah, we saw it. It was great. <laughs> uh, she sang and he's like, oh, oh dear. Okay. Yeah. He's, he's, just, he's in big trouble. So Marigold is, is uh, a trilling. And, uh, As the room in the palm in the of her, palm of her silver Yeah, I mean, hand. and they're wrapped. I mean, it's like, <laughs> but also it's like a scene in a film noir. Yeah. yeah like, it's also like intimidated. Right. It's like a scene in an old film noir where she is this glamorous chanteuse and uh, all, everyone is just like... Madonna and Dick Tracy. 100%. Yeah. A real, Marigold, a breathless Mahoney type. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That was in the casting breakdown. Right. Must be able to accurately do a breathless um, okay, I think while everyone's distracted and riveted, um, Lawrence scans the room to see if anybody is wearing the the seems to have the the badge accoutrement or uh or or just general vibe of a road warden uh yes absolutely so you know uh road warden's colors change kind of from from town to town and state to state and uh and city to city and you know that the the road wardens here again are probably Grissenwald. Um, they're pretty controlled. Their central hub is Grissenwald. That's their like department HQ. And so you're looking around for the Grissenwald colors, which are green and yellow. Um, and uh, give me a perception roll. <laughs> Packers. Plus okay. 30. Just like the Packers. Yeah, Green Bay Packers. <laughs> yeah. looking, you're looking for a Packers fan. Real Packer backer. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, a plus 20. Yeah. Come on, daddy. 
It's just an average. Uh, Same for you. You can all do this, Smilar and Marigold. You can also okay. keep your eyes peeled. Uh, for do us. I have a uh, great. on it since I live near here? I rolled a, a 37 on a, on a 67, so I, I made it. Okay, great. Um, just to make sure that everyone else, yeah, so Phil, just, so you, uh, yeah, you're just at a plus 20, because this is like a kind of, you, this is just a looking thing. This is like, can you yeah. see through the kind of dark what, um, recesses? Which skill am I? Which so you're doing perception, perception. Gil. So again, check okay. your sheet for okay. uh, it, perception. It has a 55 on my sheet, and I rolled a 45. Great. Oh, so you right. also you had a plus it, yeah. 20. So you were on a 75. So you really killed it. So from up on the stage. Oh, and oh, oh, I add the 20, do, 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 I add the number that's on my sheet, not the number I rolled. Oh, now right. I understand it all. Okay. That's okay. Don't worry. Again, it, it, these things are it, 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 <laughs> always complicated. Like when we're in person, you know, I can point like here okay. on your sheet and here on here. Uh, you know, like, I made the same mistake. Harder. The okay. first, yes. like, three rolls the way, were the exact same. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh shit, I'm never going to win if I'm putting 20 on my dice roll. Yeah, yes. Yes. this has so much more math really than I'm used to in these games. Okay. Now yeah. I'm with you all. Listen, um, and, and despite all that, Gil, you've already successfully managed to defecate in the street <laughs> and entertain some people. <laughs> and entertain and intimidate. <laughs> this and is why we play the game. I, so I, on my perception, I rolled a, it was a 60 and I rolled a 55. So I just made it. Yeah, great. So I think you all successfully spot in the corner, a very lugubrious looking character in a booth, nursing a giant uh, uh, foaming stein of ale of some kind. Um, this guy, I say. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that's a dope design. Cool. That is a very dope design. Ooh. Once again, Will Potteroff, glorious work. Uh, also, oh. by the way, I will say, I'll add this, not to pull back the curtain too much. I sent him a message at like nine o'clock last night being like, oh God, I need a picture of uh, uh, a road warden. He's like, yeah, great, cool. And 45 minutes later, this appeared. Wow. Oh, gosh, he's incredible. That in I, that's incredible. Basically. Just a yeah. master. Um, really, really good. Um, oh. So yeah, you see this figure like slumped in a thing in the corner. Um, and he he's watching. He's the only person that is not entranced by uh, Marigold. Um, he's <laughs> so like I, watching. But he's got like a glassy eye. He's got a thousand yard stare. He looks um, he looks pretty down and out. So I sashay up to him and I uh, I like, hey buddy, uh, you look you look a little downtrodden. Can I roll charm on him? You can. Uh, but you have to do it straight. This is difficult. It's a difficult okay. man's charm. So you're not going to get okay. any pluses to this. My charm is 30 and I rolled a five. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm like, hey, buddy. Ooh, very good. I see a, bo I see a large bottle that you're drinking out of. Uh, can, I, can I buy you a drink? You, you look a little upset. Sure, I'll take a drink. Why not? I've earned it, haven't I? I bloody, I deserve it. Don't I? Yeah, buddy. Um, hey, hey, Lawrence. Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm a, I. I live in squalor, so I don't have a ton of money. Maybe we can pool our money, or should we rob the bartender? <laughs> no, actually, is I, I do have a question. Is the bartender entranced by Marigold? The bartender is, is entranced by Marigold. Yeah. All right, so I I want to try and snatch a bottle while the bartender is entranced. Okay, sure. I will say that. Oh, here she is. <laughs> la, 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 la. <laughs> la, la, la. Who who could not get lost in that dis <laughs> virtuoso <laughs> display? Could not be both charmed and intimidated Earth. by that. Truly, truly, the elves are a bewitching folk. <laughs> <laughs> that they are. That they. Ah, um, and uh, oh, yeah, so you can. So I'll say that you can try this. It's going to be another dexterity roll, but you're going to be at a plus thirty okay. um, to just try and like lift something yeah. off the bar, because okay. the but this is a this is a uh, a bar maid. Even the bar maid is like struck by the oh. ethereal grace. Uh, and I, and I do it. It was a it's a fifty seven. I rolled a forty. Great. Okay. Awesome. So yeah, you lift a uh, a bottle of. Um, some kind of, uh, let's say, Stirland brandy uh, as a popular drink. Um, and uh, you're able to, to give this guy a drink. Uh, as you return to the booth, uh, Lawrence, what are you doing while this is happening? Yeah, I was, I was left there at the booth. So um, I was just like, we hear that you indeed have earned your night of revelry. Um, may I have the pleasure of knowing your name? I am Lawrence von Eberhard. Uh, Moritz Dorn's my name. Of course, Mr. Dorn. 
Sergeant Dawn. It's Sergeant Dawn, I'll have you know. Very well then, Sergeant. I hear that you've had a very eventful evening. Uh, I've had an event for a few months. Pal, let me tell you. <laughs> bum, bum, That's so bum, great. Bum. I love that. Dun, dun, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, the Eastern Conference. <laughs> Moritz um, Dawn. Yeah. Uh, 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 University of <laughs> the <laughs> Ohio State. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Schmeckland Polytechnic. Um, <laughs> I, um, indeed, I hear. But speaking of events, perhaps if you will allow me to cut to something more specific, I seek sure. to know about your. Encounter with a Mr. Bruno Faltz. Oh. And you see, again, uh, it doesn't even take an intuition roll to see a flicker of revulsion and horror passes across his face. And he's like, yeah, who's the one that did for poor Burnt? Who was the last of us, just he and I? When I, when I got stationed here, there was 25 road wardens. We, we kept the the streets safe and the and the byways and highways clear of danger. But over the last few months, one by one, we've all fallen. Fighting goblins, beastmen, bandits. All manner of terrible creatures and beasts. Wild things. Things with arms. Things without arms. All of them. You name them. Arms, no arms. I've seen a lot. The full spectrum of arm attachments. Yes, yeah. Some with, some with parts of arms even mm -hmm. in the middle. Yeah, like I say, there's nothing I haven't seen. And we've all been picked off one by one. And in the end, it was just burnt and me. One man on, one man off. I worked the day shift, he worked the night shift. Two days ago, I found him in the morning when I come on shift. He'd been taken to pieces like a jigsaw puzzle made out of a fella. But, like, he's not been put back after someone's made it and then they've dumped it back in the box. You know, the elf can tell she's nodding her head up there on the stage. She's got that keen elf hearing. She can hear everything we're saying over here. <laughs> um, oh, she's still, I must say, she's a hell of a mover. <laughs> yes, her amazing voice, or as she calls it, her instrument, is always <laughs> tuned and ready to perform. But You're I lucky... You lucky fellas to have to spend such time. <laughs> Presumably when you're when when you're out there in the wilds around the campfire, she sings one of her famous la 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 songs. Yes. Do la, you know la la. <laughs> la 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 After this unfortunate occurrence, do you have any knowledge of where precisely this felts and the townsman that he so cruelly abducted? Where they oh, may have gone where to? He's gone. I can tell you where he's gone. And uh, you all lean forward, including Franziska Kessler, who is, uh, who is throughout this entire thing, you notice has already drunk like maybe three or four pints of beer just sitting there next to you. She's clearly uh, has, a tr uh, has some trouble with alcohol. Um, and uh, he leans in and is like, yes, I can tell you exactly where he's gone. He's gone up the mountain. He's gone up the mountain to the valley of Stolzenberg. He said there's something drawing him there a voice which is a power who knows except for him perhaps but if you want bruno faltz you're gonna have to go up the mountain pass into the valley of stoltzenberg so be it um well, you have been just the most helpful and we really appreciate it i apologize i have drank all of this i promised you a drink but i your story oh. was too interesting so i drank it all i'm sorry that's that's a shame i uh i um lawrence takes the coin he stole earlier and uh just slides it across the bar table to uh to uh this guy oh ah. oh this one goes out to you. What's the guy's name? It's Mo Moritz. My name's Moritz. Moritz. <laughs> oh, very lovely. And um, so, uh, as you, as Lawrence slides the coin across the desk to him, 
across the desk, across the, the table of the booth to him. Um, and and uh, um, uh, Marigold uh, launches into another one of her siren songs from up on the stage, uh, specifically dedicated to him. You see a, a single tear uh, um, falls down his craggy, ill-shaven face. And he's like, th th thank you, kind strangers. Thank you very much. Uh, oh. And he 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 he, um, uh, he settles into a position uh, of uh, of longing and uh, uh, love, staring towards Marigold. And you guys feel as though maybe you've made this guy's very awful life slightly better. For <laughs> and that's that's nice. That's nice. Um, so uh, Kessler um, is like. Boom and hits, drops another massive stein of beer. She drank like four beers uh, here uh, in the twelve minutes you've been inside this tavern, <laughs> and uh, it's like, right, no time like the present. Come on, you lot, we better get up that pass before it gets dark, and leads you out of the tavern, uh, back to the ostler where you pick up your donkeys. <laughs> yeah. uh, you pass through a gate uh, at the other end of Grenmarkt, and you start to make your way. Uh, along a track towards um, oh, oh no um, uh, we um, start to follow a we just got a secret message telling us to be careful about playing naughty music in case oh. we get told off by the internet but don't worry Gil hey if anybody comes after you then it's highly unlikely there's nothing I won't do anything about it because I don't think that's my place but I don't think anyone will come after you about it um, so uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the Sondheim is Stephen Sondheim wants his pound of flesh for the <laughs> for the use of sooner or later. <laughs> He's famously litigious. He spends yes. a lot of time on Twitch looking for uh, right. small, small scale games where people <laughs> yeah. play yeah. his songs. Um, so uh, yes, you you guys pass out of the gates back into the frozen uh, countryside, uh, and ahead of you. There is like a wall. You are you are probably a, f a few miles away from. This is something I should have said while you're in the town. The the grey mountains just rocket up out of the, out of the, gr the the flat ground ahead of you. Uh, really, only a couple of miles away. Um, and so, after about an hour's uh, uh, progress, because you guys are travelling pretty slowly um, on these icy roads, um, and the roads here, like this, is a kind of. Uh, what is normally a hardened earthen track um, uh, leading this way. Um, it is not, um, in some parts of the empire, there are proper kind of cambered, cobbled roads between the major settlements of the empire, but out here, not so much. And you guys, um, after a while, start to ascend. You are, you are pushing up, uh, following this track, up towards what you can see is a, a pass, a very high pass up ahead of you. Um, and as you, as you proceed... Uh, you start to reach the edge of thick pine forests. This is, um, you know, uh, um, uh, uh, over them there is like a miasma of um, uh, light uh, uh, as the wind whips through the trees. There's like a miasma of like airborne snow. And uh, uh, it is, uh, you know, that way when you see sometimes there's like almost sits like a mist above above the snow around you. Um, it's... Um, uh, been relatively clear all morning um but as you proceed north um uh as you start to get higher and higher not north you're actually heading south but you're getting you're going up in elevation and like a simple man i confused north with up yeah. for a second there um uh, and as you proceed up the side of the mountain it gets colder and it gets colder and uh clouds start to um close in around you and um uh, first, the, the odd fat flake of snow starts to fall around you. And before long, it's snowing really quite heavily. And the track in front of you is starting to get obscured a little bit. And everybody, I would like you to give me... I'm excited about this. This is a new thing I've never done in this game before. Everybody give me an endurance test. Oh. Um, and that is at a plus zero. This is just a straight endurance test. Okay. So, um, Secret Keeper Clint... Um, uh, I know you can hear me. Would you really quickly look up the condition, uh, get the conditions section of the game open? Now, when the dot, is this a six or a nine? That is a nine, pal. All right, I rolled a nine. You rolled a nine, very good. Uh, um, okay. Did you say this was plus 10, Humphrey? 
Oh no, this is plus nothing. This is just a oh. straight roll. Then I failed it. Okay. Yeah, I failed Spider, it pretty pretty bad too. I got a seventy six on okay. uh, no, a forty six. Let me see how. Uh, let me have a look at how. Marigold was kept warm with the power of song. Kessler does. <laughs> we'll Non-Sondheim does. songs. Yes. <laughs> okay, so guys. I don't know if any of you have ever watched any of those like Naked and Afraid type shows uh, where they drop uh, random uh, people into the kind of wilderness to survive under certain circumstances. And all the like meathead dudes always go down. They crash out real early and all the women last way longer. Well, much like that. Um, uh, both Smilar and Lorenz are getting frozen. So you guys mm. are each gaining the frozen condition. Mm. I think it's called frozen. That's what Secret Keeper Clint is having a, a snoop on. Um, because uh, we, I don't know what the what the what is. Um, and uh, you guys are going to be suffering from Frozen, so that is going to give you some penalties as we move ahead. Um, but both Marigold, um, Branch Stepper, used to the Frozen wilderness uh, of uh, the, the forests that the, the, elves, the Wood Elves dwell in, mm -hmm. um, and Francisca Kessler, who is a copper bottom badass, as previously discussed, um, both shrug off this cold and, and push on. How are the donkeys doing, you ask? They're just fine. How are the Don't donkeys worry, doing? Guys. Great. Um, thank you, Phil. Uh, they're doing just well. They've got their winter coats on, their big woolly shaggy uh, donks. Um, and in fact, you guys have maybe put um, some great mm. big... They've probably got big uh, sort of... Um, uh, oh, shit. <laughs> I probably should have looked up what Frozen does before this. I've just got the rule in. So um, one of your limbs, randomly <laughs> determined, is frozen in place for 1d10 hours. Oh, for what? Damn. Damn. So, so both Phil and um, uh, um, Ross, roll me a, a 1d10, one of these. Okay. Oh, that's limb frozen. Hang on. Maybe oh. it's not. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Oh, I see. Okay, yeah. Um, yes, this is what we're going to do is you're actually going to gain the fatigued condition. That is a, uh, I, I, so if you guys are exposed for too long, then your limbs can start to freeze in place. Gotcha. Um, and then you can get in, in real um, trouble. But what we're going to do perhaps is that you're going to say that you guys are both fatigued. And I think that what that does is um, you are, means you're basically you become exhausted. You get a minus 10 penalty to all your tests. Um, and in order to recover from this, you basically need to, um, warm up slightly or um, and you know funny enough I would even say that things like well we'll see but just bear in mind that you guys are both on a minus 10 for your test right now and interestingly enough it's time for a test right now another test because you guys have started to progress even further up and now you're in a really thickly wooded area that leads I just spat on my keyboard I didn't need to tell you guys that but I'm nothing if not relentlessly honest with everybody <laughs> um, I also made a very unsuccessful cup of tea before this started everybody that I was made fun of backstage Honesty again, best policy. I am a trans. I am the most transparent uh, keeper we have ever had in this role. Um, much like our beloved president. Again, if you're listening, USCIS. I think he he's great. Um, everybody else, I'm not that much of a fan. Um, so uh, unless yes, you hate you guys, him, then I then you unless you him. unless you guys hate him, and which listen, I'm very flexible. I am um, I am the perfect new American. Um, so the. Uh, yeah, you guys both fatigued at minus 10 penalties. The, everybody, including Francisca Kessler, I'm going to roll for her. Give me a perception roll. Um, uh, Gil, you are at a plus 20 to your perception because you are right as rain. Um, Phil and Rossi, you're both at a minus 10 to your perception. I can't see, I can't see anything in this, in this fog, in this snow, like, rather. Um, too cold and tired. Uh, Lawrence's unblinking eyes while... It, while suffering from fatigue, are still far-sighted and perceptive as ever. Great. I, I, uh, Gil? Yeah, as soon as I don't know, I, <clears throat> I rolled a 50, and um, now I know that my perception on the sheet is a 75. Yeah, very good. So, yeah, you, you also, so, so I would say that it's not even your eyes yet, but as you're making your way up the hill, you know, that thing where often when you're in real cold temperatures, I don't know if you find this, I do like the inside of my nose is burning. My sense of smell is almost not as good as it is normally. But but very quickly, almost at the same moment, Francisca starts to like slow down in front of you and you see her looking around and almost uh, instantaneously, uh, both Lorenz and Marigold, similarly, this terrible smell starts to assail you um, from out of the kind of, it's now... 
probably about 4 p.m. I would say it's winter time, so it's starting to get pretty dark. Um, and uh, you know uh, that uh, so so it's hard to see ahead of you, but something smells really really bad. And um, uh, Francisca in front of you shh, draws her sword and is like something's coming. I grab and my so sling. I suggest Ooh. you all, everyone, draw their draws their respective weapons. Yeah. Yeah. Range yeah. bow. Suddenly, in front of you, you start to hear your successful perception. You hear a crashing ahead of you in the trees, and um, uh, even a moments after that, you hear a distant like <laughs> kind of noise and lumbering out of the tree line uh, uh, off to the side of the path ahead of you comes this. Oh, wow. Damn. Some and, sort of minotaur. Uh, you recognize this as it is probably about 10 feet tall, um, uh, maybe eight feet tall, uh, pretty heavily muscled. Um, uh, this one is uh, unarmed, but behind it comes another one uh, that is like this, but it has the face of a, like a wild boar with huge tusks mm. sticking out the front of it. And they come blundering out of the tree line ahead of you. Um, seemingly, you would say, uh, like running kind of wildly. And um, they get to within about 20 or 30 yards of you before they even notice that you're there. And um, so you guys surprise them. So, guys, it's time for us to have what we call an initiative role. Now, the way this works in this game, or the way I like to do it in this game, is um, I want everybody to roll me a d10. One. That's the, the this yep. one with just the, the one's those yep. in it. Um, you're going to roll that. You're then going to add, and everyone remain calm because I'm going to say a new phrase to you, your initiative bonus. So that means you look at your initiative characteristics in the characteristics section of your sheet. Okay. Um, then that says I in, uh, it says I. So on your sheet, okay. if anyone's worried, we've got your sheets. I can look up your things. Do okay. I have your sheets? Yeah, I've got them here. It's, it's I. So I is see. initiative, right? I, yeah. So okay. Gil, your initiative is 50. Mm -hmm. I, 50. Mm -hmm. So your initiative bonus is the front number of your initiative. So, Five. Uh, yes, exactly. So you're going to roll your d10. And you're going to add five. Chances are you're going to go first because you're an elf. So you move much faster than other people do. Um, but but tell me what your number was. Six or a nine. What is this? Don't worry. I'm just going to get... Uh, that is a six. Um, so there's a six plus a five. So your initiative is 11. Okay. Um, Lorenz von Eberhard, what is your initiative? It is nine. Uh, very good. Nine for Lawrence. Uh, and uh, Smilar, what is yours? Mine is, my, my roll the three and my initiative is, the, the number is three, so six. Yeah, six. Okay, that's great. And then let me just quickly see what these uh, turkeys are, <laughs> are sporting. Um, so they have... An initiative. They're not terribly initiative. -y. Nine. Okay, great. So it's gonna go. Oh, and I need to do Francisca Marigold. Um, goat. Pig. What? Sorry, I'm just talking to myself. Don't you worry, Lorenz. Smile. And then let me just really quickly see what Francisca Kessler does. She's she's good at this business. Um, oh, she has a high initiative as well. Oh, very good. Okay. So she is going to go here. Okay. So um, you, uh, so yeah, these things come running towards you and, and they're not even really aware of you. So you guys are going to get a free round of attacks in on them before uh, they come. In fact, give me an intuition roll. And I will also, or I will say, Phil, you can give me a law beasts roll. Okay. And you can have that at a plus 30 because you're observing oh, nice. them for a moment while they're running towards you. They're not even aware of what's going on. So you, okay. you, you spend a lot of time around uh, as, as a hunter, as a woodsman. You have spent a lot of time around these sorts of things. So you know a lot about it. Hot dog, I did it. It's a 70 and I rolled a 37. Great. So you can see that they're running from something. 
That is the impression you get from these things. They're, they are fleeing something. Um, uh, so, uh, yeah, first up, Marigold, you are up. Do you want to shoot an arrow at these guys? No. Oh, what do you want to do? Well, if they're running from something, they're probably not going to be attacking us. If they're fleeing. Uh huh. So maybe I run alongside them and say, hey, what are you running from? <laughs> Very good. Okay, well, I will say, um, I don't want to be a party pooper because oh. I love that energy. However, I would say, okay, here's what I will say, if I may. And you can still absolutely do this. These are, you know what these are because you are a creature of the woods and forests. And you know these are beast men. And beast oh! men tend to be um, real uh, jerks. Is that, is that a PC way of putting it? I don't know. Okay, um, I, but I they... shoot them in the Achilles heel. <laughs> I feel bad for for uh, forcing you to do that, but I at the same time I just wanted to uh, to be a real law penis, um, and so I was. Um, so uh, yes, you want to shoot them with the, in the Achilles heel? You want to take an mm -hmm. aim shot? Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. Um, so you are very good at uh, at archery, um, and so I'm going to say that ordinarily I would give you quite a big penalty to try and take an aim shot specifically like that. I would say like a minus 20 or something like that. But because they are fleeing, they're not aware of you. You've had plenty of time to draw a bead on them and you are very good at this and you passed your endurance roll. Just roll me at a 50. Try and roll, or what? I think you're 50, right? My ranged bow is a 46. 46, right. So try and roll under that. Ah, uh, nuts. No I good? Over 80. Okay, that's all right. It's it's difficult to hit um, the, uh, you know, because you were specifically like, right, I want to hit him in the ankle rather than like, I just want to hit him. Oh. It's, a bit it's a bit trickier. I thought I could take them down that way and still interrogate them. To no, honestly, you, you absolutely can. And I like that. Um, uh, I, I thoroughly approve of that methodology. Um, it's just that it gets a bit trickier if you want to hit them in the, in the ankle. If you're like, I just want to shoot this guy, you, you get more bonuses. But like, that's good. I like... This is an excellent choice. You seem sad. I don't want to make you sad, pal. I don't want to get you out here on a Saturday morning and, and uh, no, start no, your day I, off with I a bummer. No, no, I had such a victory with my singing. You know, it's okay. I can't <laughs> the singing it. was a, the you singing got was a major victory. It was a triumph. <laughs> you got it greedy, Marigold. <laughs> okay, well, look, I'm going to move things along. It's, Fra it's Francisca Kessler's turn next. So she's going to fire her pistol at one of them. Oh, and she is, we have guns. Uh, yeah, we have guns. Oh yeah, you can get you can get black powder guns in this oh. in this world. It's like a uh, and listen, guys, there may be opportunities for you to find such things. If you want, if there are things you are interested in finding, we can talk about it, and maybe I can see if they're around. Um, but uh, at this point, yeah, she's uh, wait, gonna, she before has we do two, that. Like, are there any guns pistols. lying around? <laughs> <laughs> it's in there. No, not okay. right now. Just check but it. she has a flint <laughs> flintlock pistol, so it is like a you know you fire one, you then have to spend ages reloading it. <laughs> But she lifts her pistol and bam, fires it towards the, the closest one. Uh, and let me see what uh, her statties are. Uh, they are, okay, she's pretty good. Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay, so she critically succeeded. She rolled a three. Oh. Um, uh, and so that means I need to find the, uh, can you give me, find me the loca hit location? Um, uh, uh, what's it, Clint, really quickly? Sorry, I should have all this stuff in front of me, but I do not um so uh let me just see how much damage she does first of all because uh, i believe it's going to be quite a considerable amount um so she does that so there's a plus eight plus all her success levels like so oh yeah i mean okay so um let's see what happens when she shooty him um so yeah she fires off a shot and she just plugs this thing um real uh, successfully, gloriously successfully. Um, and I want to find the critical hit table so I can see what that achieved. Criticals and fumbles. Uh, determine hit location is she hit him, you reverse it, so 30 uh, in his right arm. So her bullet takes him in the right arm and what does it do? I then have to re... Uh, if you, oh, you've got it, Clint. Okay, so I'm gonna. Uh, so I will. Uh, I'll roll a d100 on the right arm damage. So I rolled a 90. I rolled a 36 critical hit into the right arm. Where is this table? It'd be so good. If, oh, here we go. Here we go. 36. 
bleeding hand. Okay, so you shot, she basically, uh, uh, you fire an arrow at them. It goes past one of them, and one of them kind of it suddenly becomes aware that you guys are there. Oh, no. And sees Francisca Kessler, like, raise her pistol, and it puts its hand up like this, and she shoots a bullet that passes straight through its hand. Oh, my God. Yikes. And, like, into its shoulder um, with a loud boom, and does a truly terrible amount of damage to it um, and the thing drops almost immediately and i'm gonna say it is the pig-faced one um which is a shame because he was my favorite a bit like rocksteady or bebop or whoever it was out of, yeah, out of yeah. the ninja turtles yeah, that was a... Wait, he, no, he bebop, strong... was, bebop was the pig i think yes he had strong bebop strong bebop energy he was giving off um but uh he's dropped uh, like a stone um uh, which is pretty bad for me then it is lorenz's turn all right. Um, I uh, I guess we're still on the donkeys. <laughs> uh, are you guys? No, you. So the donkeys. You've actually been dismantled? leading the donkeys. You're okay, all dismantled. Okay. I will say okay. because you guys. Sorry, I should have said that the whole time. You guys have been dismantled the whole time because the road surface is so tough that you don't want to get up on a donkey. You know, it's it's better for you to be leading the donkey so that the okay. donkey carries all the weight. But you guys have been sort of sloshing through the snow and sludge. The, uh, okay, then I'll describe. I think Lawrence would like go up his back to the nearest tree. And as the and as the um, the the Minotaur comes charging by, Lawrence wants to take a swing, take his legs out from under him with the with his sword. Great, I love it. Okay, so that is um, I like your tactics. I'm going to count that as effectively a charge um, in this game, which gives you a bonus. So you're going to attack him at a plus ten. Which so because I'm minus your... ten fatigued, would that just neutralize? Uh, yes, it's just going to go flat. Yes. Okay. And that's so melee? you're going to do your melee basic, which is on, on the second column of your sheet. Great. Because um, that, that covers basic, covers oh. swords, axes, hand weapons, anything like that. I succeed. It's, I, Great. I, so, it was a 40, uh, I rolled a 20. Okay, so you, you, that's two success levels. So you're going to do two damage plus uh, whatever your uh, sword. So, so go down to where your sword is on your sheet, which is in it's weapons. It's success bonus plus four. Plus success yeah, so bonus that plus is plus. strength bonus plus four. So you're strength six. Bonus plus four, right. Then what? What is your strength? Uh, anyway, that would be you're three. At six. Um, uh, you're at six plus three. So um, nine uh, plus four is nine. thirteen. No one's into my joke of holding up the wrong fingers for, for the numbers. Huh? I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun, but no one. I think it's it. fun. Don't uh, listen thank to them. You, I love you. Phil gains plus 20 to every roll from now yes. on. Um, fine. No, <laughs> not really. Not really, guys. I don't play favorites here, um, but, but we all know Ross is okay. my favorite. No. Um, so, so, uh, just, no. Uh, so I'm like, it's, it's success level so, plus strength level. So it's your success plus level? Yes. That, and that is how it works for your sword. So that worked out as nine, I believe, right? Total. You do well, nine damage. Oh, the success level was two, right? Two, yeah. Strength bonus is three, so that's five. Yeah, that's five. And then it's an extra plus four for the sword? Yeah, so not nine total damage to him. Great, 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 great. Uh, theoretically. Right. But then his toughness and his armor, because uh, he's wearing like a leather jock strap, basically, um, you know, real fantasy sort of barbarian bad guy armor. Mm -hmm. Great. Where it's like, cool leather thong. Why do you even bother with that? Yeah, he's got a cool leather yeah. thong. And when he turns, he's thick um, at the back with two C's. <laughs> nice. he's, got a, he's got a big, thick uh, goat man butt. And um, Sick. you uh, take a flash daddy. at him. And then his toughness, he's very much a minotaur daddy. Oh, yeah, he's like a, he's like a, a cow man, isn't he? Not a, mm -hmm. not a, uh, not a mm -hmm. uh, goat man. I apologize. Um, and his toughness is... Four. So he takes four of those off. So he takes five wounds. Okay. Um, so he's, you know, you slash him, but good. Um, and he bellows in bestial uh, cow fury. Ah. And um, it is then the turn of Smilar. Smilar, what do you want to do to this guy? All right. So I pull out my, well, I already have it out. So um, actually, I do have a quick question. Can I use, can I roll my lore Rakeland or even just use my knowledge of beasts and all of that to know which one seems to be more hurt? Uh, yes. Oh, I should say, I'm sorry. I didn't make that clear enough. Uh, the one that was beast. shot is dead. Like it, oh, it, it, it okay. went down. Um, oh, gotcha. Like it went down like a gout of blood. Like right. it, so I use my lore beast, I use my lore beast to tell that he's dead. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> my I was like, hey, <laughs> you guys might What's not know, but... The, that thing that's face down with just a pool of blood uh, just building around his body is not well. 
Yeah, <laughs> guys, my spider sense is tingling. I, I think yeah. that one might be dead. <laughs> I don't want to commit. Everybody shut up and gonna... let me think. I think it's yeah. I don't want to commit. I, to I know my beast. dead, but it is dead. So yeah, you want to take a shot at the other one or, or hit it yes, with your axe? I, I, so I take out my swing. Uh, I actually take out my sling. Do I take sling? out my axe or do I take out my sling? I take out my sl well. I already have my sling out, and yeah. I yeah, load I a I load a stone bullet into it. Mm -hmm. And I swing it with great fury, like da like David and David and Goliath. If the Bible exists in this world, I'm not 100 yeah. percent sure. Um, and, you just, and I, yes, yeah, sorry, sorry. No, please. No, I was just about to ask you what you're about to do, and then you were in the middle of telling me that. So I was being okay. patient, Ian. And I launch it with all fury at uh, this cow man. Great. And you just aiming like center mass kind of thing, or are you trying to specifically? Yeah, I, hit it I know specific location, but just like to uh, just to kill it. Great. Like I, I'm, so are, I'm, I'm going to kill, but I don't. Perfect. I'm not any. You are at pretty place. close range, um, so I'm going to say you're at a plus twenty. Uh, so to I get a plus ten, then, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Uh, oh wait, and before I do that, uh, actually, okay, I'm yeah. going to say also it's slowed down because it's been slashed by Lawrence. It's staggered. Okay. It's like <laughs> it basically is just like a mooing furiously at the sky. Um, and so uh, I'm going to say you're even at a plus 30. So let's make you a plus 20 to your sling. Okay. And then where, and then is this in my, and then that is in your, it'll on? be, I'm pretty sure it's in your advanced skills um, on the left hand side. Oh, sorry. On the full right hand side of your page, there should be a thing that says ranged and then sling um, in, in amongst your skills. There. Oh, okay. So that's what I'm rolling. Yeah. That's in my, um, that's actually in my weapons. Uh, so the range is 60. So I just have to roll. Uh, no, hang on. Sorry, oh, no, sorry. I did do that wrong. No, no, don't worry. This, I can tell you. In fact, I've got your sheets here, so I can tell you exactly what it is. Um, Phil's. Okay. Oh, I see what it is. It's 46. Yeah. So I need Range to get under yeah, 70. Exactly. 46. So yeah, you've got to get under 76 now. Although you're at a minus 10, so under 66. I think. Right. That stone bullet does not make it. It's okay. <laughs> I couldn't so hit the broad side of a barn. Here's the thing we've not talked about yet. You guys have a, uh, a feature called fate and fortune points. Um, so on your sheets, you all have a certain number of fate and fortune points. You okay. can spend your fortune points, which tend to regenerate in between sessions, okay. um, to re-roll a, a roll you don't like. So if you fail something real bad, I should have told you this earlier, Gil, when I, I totally forgot when you shot at his Achilles heel that there is like a re-roll mechanic you can use <sighs> sporadically. Uh, uh. Gosh, so such a good I, I pray to my it, it misses, but I pray to my tree god. Um, I don't know why we chop them down Tom. and also worship them, but yeah, look, mm -hmm. I, uh, <laughs> um, we're peasants. Tal, we're Tal is the god of hunters, so right, is who you would pray and to. I roll again. <laughs> Go for it. And I launch another one, and this one is a critical success. I get Whoa! a fourteen. <laughs> Okay. Oh wow! If you roll a fourteen, and uh, 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 that's very—that's many, many success levels. He's already in a bad way. It's Trying because of the that, god of hunters. <laughs> uh, Smilar just thrums this like stone bullet into this thing's head, and it's like a loud crack, and it just like boom, and like falls in front of you. Uh, and Kessler uh, looks around. I mean, this whole thing has taken moments. Like it is dead. Um, you've killed two two beast men very quickly. And she looks back, back at the view and is like, yeah, not, not too bad, you lot. And then starts like reloading her pistol. Um, but it is I, now... I want to believe that she's been reloading it the whole time. <laughs> oh, yeah. Later. Oh, the second that she started doing it. I mean, she's pretty adept at this. So, yeah, she's got it down to just a solid two and a half minutes of like... <laughs> nice. Speed demon. Yeah. So that's what she's got two pistols on her belt and a sword. So you imagine her typical tactic is to fire two pistols at the start of a fight and then... Shh, get swordy. Although I actually remember saying that she drew her sword, so maybe she stuck that in the ground in front of her while she fired her shot. But suffice to say, you guys, um, uh, she is, doesn't brook much hanging around. You guys um, shift, push the bodies off the side of the road and make your way uh, up the hill because it's getting darker and actually, darker. Before we do that, can I, yeah. I, I, I walk up to the corpses of these cowmen and like I don't have a lot in my rations, so I cut off a big old chunk of cow beast man meat and shove it in my pack so I can have it for later. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. For want um, of a witch, a cow man will do it. <laughs> <Right, right. laughs> so this is, uh, 
I'm going to save this for the end, but I, I'm going to come back to talk about that in a second. But yeah, you guys push forward further up the valley. And um, as you reach the very, very top of the valley, you find a, uh, at the very top of this path, you suddenly find yourself at the mouth of this entrance, this very narrow gorge that leads down into the valley of Stolzenberg. And there you find a gatehouse, like a big gate that has been built here um, with a portcullis and like all that kind of business, crenellations uh, that is uh, bestride the path. Um, and this is obviously the entrance to the Valley of Stolzenberg. But when you get there, the um, uh, the portcullis has has been like torn off and is bent in and is is destroyed by something or someone, some sizable creature. And everywhere there is silence. Uh, flags flap uh, lazily in in the in the wind as the darkness falls. And uh, Kessler ahead of you, click click. Um, cocks both of her pistols as she leads you through the through the gate. It's, so and, it's like it's kind of like that scene in Mulan, right, where they arrive after they're done singing, and like then they just see it's everything's just fucked up. Is that kind of yes? I don't recall that scene from Mulan, but yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, that sounds mm -hmm. exactly right. Yes, this is like this should be um, just so you guys know what you're supposed to be feeling. Uh, this should be <laughs> a welcome, uh, uh, and so the audience knows as well. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This should be a, a welcome respite. You should have got to a guardhouse right. where they would, you know, they maybe uh, you see there's a little low building down along one side of the gatehouse that feels like this is a kind of like dormitory where travelers that are coming up the hill can stop for the night. Um, and again, the door to that is smashed in and off its hinges. The roof has fallen in in places. Snow lies everywhere. And as uh, uh, Francisca Kester, you tie up your donkeys, uh, you mm -hmm. give them a reassuring pat. Anywhere nearby that is burning? A good, good there, is fire no, there is no seeming fire. However, I will okay. say that you, uh, the physical exercise and adrenaline that kicked in from your fight has yeah. warmed you up and has knocked the fatigue out of your body. So both of you yeah, are yeah, on yeah. minus 10. Exercise is nature's fire. Uh, indeed, also fire indeed. is nature's fire. <laughs> <laughs> Nature has um, two fires. Um, yeah. You make your way uh, into the... Into the um, uh, through the, again, smashed... This is a thick, studded, uh, defensible, probably three or four, three or four foot, no, uh, a foot and a half thick uh, oaken door into the into the watchtower. Um, and you see downstairs that everything is just, is just trashed. It smells terrible. It seems awful. And um, Kessler nosing her way around. Well, actually, Phil, you've got good tracking skills, don't you? I, I believe, believe you've got track do. on the right-hand side. Um, um, is, is that I correct? I have track. Gil, give me track. It's you who are the, are the queen tracker. Give me track at a plus 20. Yeah, I don't think I have track. Oh, shit. Well, I rolled an 82. And okay, you can, spend, you can spend a fortune point to re-roll it. So we'll say you've spent a fortune point. Don't worry, I'm keeping track. Okay, now I got a 48. And that's and good my, enough, right? Yeah, well, yes. My skill is 55 plus... 20, did you say? Yeah. So, 75, yeah, you, you, 48. You did very well. You succeeded by three success levels. Um, and so you can see very clearly it, there's there's blood everywhere. There mm -hmm. is there is feces everywhere. There's like this place is real <laughs> I've nasty. I've been here. Feel yeah. right at home. <laughs> yeah, you suddenly... <laughs> Mar Marigold suddenly gets a strong Some flash of like deja vu. Have Holds I been here? <laughs> I, this feels like home. Um, and you, uh, uh, you realize that... Um, you like beast men have been here. Many, many beast men have been in here. Um, yeah. They have, ki and you're like they've killed guards over here. You do a very good like uh, Sherlock style oh, CSI. Sure. Uh, you talk everybody through everything's happening, and Kessler, you you hear a creaking upstairs, and Kessler again cocks her gun, which she had uncocked. We know how it goes in these movies. People are endlessly cocking their guns, even right. if they've already got them cocked. Right, uh, and she points upstairs and leads her way upstairs and yeah. she's like it's beastmen all right um they may they may still be upstairs i guess those are the two we met earlier maybe some sort of scouting party and she leads you upstairs and uh uh, she I is take first, a big bite like a... of my raw beast meat, getting ready to fight. Of <laughs> <laughs> uh, the spiral staircase, and you Lawrence hear just her saying ahead a prayer of you. to Sigmar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> you hear her ahead of you. Go, her voice, a tone you've never heard enter her voice before in in the six or seven days you've known her since you met in Grisenwald. You just hear her go, 
Sigma, preserve us. And as you make your way up the stairs, you see a scene out of a nightmare. Up here on the upper floor, there are the, the, the guards, what is left of them, and the beastmen, what is left of them, who have been torn to shreds by something yeah. up here. And they have been arranged in a weird, let's be honest, very Game of Thronesy style pattern up here on the floor in this area. Some strange evil intelligence has arranged these creatures in, in this fashion. And just at the exact moment that you are taking in this horrendous and terrifying vision, there is a loud boom. Oh. And looking out of the, out of the window uh, uh, to your side, like the embrasure to your side, you see high up on the mountain side next to you, an enormous avalanche brrr, comes rumbling down the side of the mountain and buries the pass behind you in snow, blocking your exit from the, uh, from the valley and trapping you up here with whatever it was that tore all these people and beastmen to shreds. And that is where we will leave things for today. Yeah. And what we are now calling the first session of Something Wicked, a Warhammer Fantasy roleplay game for Stream of Blood. Yes. Well, guys, thank you ever so much. What a joy to have you with me on this adventure. Very we discovered fun. many important things. Yeah. Uh, Smilar is a psychopath who eats <laughs> the, uh, the flesh of his enemies. Um, <laughs> perhaps, yeah. uh, An omnivore uh, in the truest sense. <laughs> Any major fans of uh, Warhammer watching the stream may well be aware that uh, when you... <laughs> there is a thing in this game called corruption and in this world called corruption. And Beastmen are themselves the corrupted uh, versions uh, of humans and animals that have been led astray by chaos, which is the evil, uh, uh, terrifying um, uh, uh, enemy of, of order. And there's a very strong chance that Smilar is going to be turned into a beast man. Oh, no. no. Oh, no. The of this <laughs> well, you may, you may have taken on board some corruption points. Hopefully you won't fully succumb to the terrible whispers of chaos over the course of this. But, because then um, we yeah. have to slay you for your own good and the good of your eternal soul. Exactly. <laughs> um, exactly. Um, so uh, uh, I will say, I've got some, some bump to read here, but I'll say before I do that, I think I'll let you guys go because I've taken up more than enough your Saturday. So I'll say a huge thank you to Phil Walker, our Smile Our Balloon. A uh, huge yeah. thank you to Ross Bryant, Lawrence Von Eberhard, and of course, <laughs> uh, our favorite chanteurs, uh, Marigold, oh. Jill Gave. Jill Jacobs, everybody. Good God. <laughs> Gillian <laughs> Jacobs, um, who also has a birthday coming up soon. It's not just Rossi, oh. so everyone stay calm. Oh, and it's my birthday, birthday tomorrow. Happy oh, happy pre birthday. Thanks, pals. A lot of birthday Great pals. Stuff. Phil, when's your birthday? Uh, February. Uh, who gives a shit then? Get fucked. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, all right, pals. <laughs> take it. Beat it. What are you doing trying to muscle in on our birthday time? Um, uh, and um, yes, thank you. This is so fun. I love this game. I love you all. Thank you, and uh, I will I will release you into the ether, and I will tell everybody on the uh, who still remains on the stream what to look forward to next. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Um, oh, Brian's appearing. Oh, he's disappeared again. <laughs> well, guys, everybody, look. If you enjoyed this, um, first of all, God bless you. You're my people, um, and you like this sort of uh, febrile uh, Warhammer. Uh, um, M m m madness that's a good word for it um but look out for all these other great stream of blood events that are upcoming um so tomorrow stream of blood returns with more of my favorite people thomas middleditch ashley birch and ross bryant in vampires of pittsburgh if you haven't watched any of that it, it, there are many many episodes of that up online they are amazing those three are all great our beloved ross Lawrence von eberhard that you just saw um ashley birch star of smash hit apple tv show uh um mythic quest raven's banquet tommy mindleditch uh who many of you may know from his glorious uh career as a comedian improviser and all those things but also as a flyer of airplanes and possessor of dogs uh, and that is on tomorrow at 6 p.m pacific time um uh then on tuesday at 7 p.m pacific time it's time for coven the channel's classic Call of Cthulhu show featuring comedians Megan Gailey, Lisa Traeger, and Kara Clank. If you haven't watched any of that, it is terrific. The three people who've never played the game before but have taken to it like ducks to water. Um, 
Also, if you enjoyed this, we are a very small operation, really. We get amazing people, as you've just seen, um, but uh, we're still a boutique. Um, but yeah, you can put our um, uh, you can put the word about on our behalf. For, uh, you know, follow us on Twitch. Subscribe for special emotes and that sort of thing. I don't fully understand those things yet myself, but I'm trying to. I'm trying to get cool. Uh, we're on Instagram and Twitter as um, uh, underscore stream of blood underscore, and on Reddit at our stream of blood. If you're on Discord, you can connect with us and other SOBs. That's stream of blood, folks. I want I want bloodheads, but I'm not important enough to make that decision. But stream of SOBs on our newly hatched Discord stream of bloods server of blood and we'll be putting all sorts of official announcements chats all manner of extra content on there for instance this wednesday at 7 pacific time 7 p.m pacific time um and also because we're old people and we love to disseminate um uh weird memes about joe biden uh, we're also on facebook so you can find us there um now in terms of our credits again we mentioned him a couple of times through this but by golly we've got to mention him again Will Potteroff, who has produced all this amazing artwork for this and more amazing stuff for the rest of the adventure uh, that I can't wait for you guys to see. Um, and uh, we also must give special thanks to our producers and partners, our beloved Brian Baldinger and uh, Clinton Trucks. Uh, and certainly not forgetting our social media manager, Megan Arch, who is uh, a hero and doesn't get nearly enough credit around here. Uh, and I'll finally say the Stream of Blood logo was created by Garrett Ross. Now, that is it. That is the end of the, uh, that is the, end of the stream. Um, I think if anyone uh, wants to ask any questions, we sometimes do this. If people are in the in the um, uh, aha fancy pants eighty three has come up with, is there a free start to get a feel for the rules? I believe there is. So this game is published by um, Cubicle Seven. Uh, let's see, what have I have I got a, a thing around here? Yeah. So here are some like uh, Warhammery books. They're beautiful. I will say that my stupid my stupid talking times don't really do justice to the fabulous uh, stuff they do in here. The artwork, the maps, the, the everything else they give you um, that we, I don't even know if I'm, I mean, this is a free advert for them, right? They can't get there mad about it. But I think if you go to cubicle7.com, uh, I think that's the website, uh, maybe um, Secret Keeper Clint can quickly Google it. I'm pretty sure they will they will give you a, a, a starter set, but they have a, uh, there may be a free like PDF kind of get a sense of it kind of thing. Um, otherwise, they, they produce a really great starter set that has a really fun campaign that they have written. Hello, on brand, Warhammer, uh, upside down Warhammer box up here. I'm absolutely smashing it. They should they should really pay me for this. Here we go. There you go. So there, there is a link that's just been thrown up by, by Clint um, to tell you how to get into it. And it's, you know, I'm playing a slightly stripped down version of this for you guys and for the gang just to make things go a bit faster. Um, but in the main... We've covered the sort of the, the central tenets of the rules. One of the coolest things is the career system, which we almost won't even get onto because this is a short, sharp thing. But if you're doing a long-term campaign, our guys are Gil is a spy, um, uh, Rossi is a um, witch hunter, and Phil is a, a hunter, just a regular hunter. He's like a woodsman, a hardy woodsman type fellow. Um, uh, but there are many. You can be an apothecary. You can be a hedge witch. You can be a pit fighter you can be a lawyer you can be a knight there is a, there are tons of different careers um, and things in there and they are all real fun are there any more questions if ross's character's mother is a witch does he have any magical abilities that's a great question snacks all 1701 i also very much like your harry potter avatar i assume it's harry potter apologies if uh, it is a potter well it's a potter adjacent person and if it's not really come on snacks all you you're very potterish um, and um, so, uh, no, uh, uh, his mother, the magical powers in the empire manifest themselves in many different ways and are seen uh, really as a curse by and large, because if you are a, um, an untrained magical user, which is our magical users, and it's not always inherited, uh, those abilities. Um, if you are an unlicensed magic user, you are a witch or a hedge witch. And if you are a licensed magic user, that usually means you were discovered at a young enough age by uh, an authority figure who felt that you hadn't been too tainted by chaos and you'd be sent off to the colleges of magic in Altdorf. Um, and so many, many witches in this world are, um, you know, forces for good. They are your traditional village wise women and people like that who can do a little bit of magic that they have discovered themselves and have managed not to blow themselves up or turn someone important into a fish and thereby get uh, arrested and burnt. Um, but, um, yeah, it's not necessarily an inherited trait is the answer. 
Um, are there any more for any more? Or is that it? I, it's hard to tell. Oh, is Blood Bowl considered canon or is it just a fun side thing? Well, I, funny enough, here we go. Uh, it's, I can, guys, I'm really airing all my dirty laundry. I've got some Blood Bowl things here. These are Blood Bowl, for those that don't know, is a, oh, this is, here we go. A Blood Bowl, for those that don't know, oh, what? How am I doing this? <laughs> is a like fantasy football game essentially with uh, the sort of creatures that inhabit the Warhammer world. These are my two teams that I have, the Dwarf Giants and the Skaven Splite Scramblers. These are a team of Ratmen and a team of Dwarves. Um, so I think Blood Bowl is not really considered canon. It's like a fun, fun side thing is the exact way to put it. I kind of love it in some of my uh, Warhammer RPG games, I have mentioned people wanting to check the Blood Bowl scores and what have you. Um, so they exist in my world, but not in the like. The game, the, the tabletop games are a little bit more, they've got a great sense of humor running through them, which is why I love it, but they are a little bit more serious and that, which is not me. I'm very silly. So that's why my game is silly. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, you're all heroes. This is uh, a thoroughly baffling thing that anyone wants to sit and watch us do this, but I love it. And so thank you very much. Same time next week, uh, and we will see how our gang get on in the frozen wilds of Valley of Anstolzenberg. All right, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>